state of emergency that could see basic civil disobedience punished by heavy sentences, including death. Among the acts that the new law criminalizes are the publication or promotion of terrorism-related news that contradicts the defense ministry's official statements and equalizes punishment for suspicion and execution of a terrorist crime. The law also erodes time limits for prosecuting terrorist acts, meaning there is no expiration date for suspected or committed crimes linked to terrorism to be tried in court. The organization claims the new definition far exceeds the definition adopted by the United Nations Security Council in 2004, adding also that the new law counters the basic idea of international human rights law that requires legislation to be precisely written so to avoid its arbitrary use in prosecuting a crime. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department captain charged in a probe of jail abuse pled guilty on Wednesday to lying on the witness stand. Under his plea agreement, William Thomas Carey must cooperate with U.S. prosecutors in the case against a retired second-in-command at the department. Carey entered his guilty plea in federal court in Los Angeles and faces up to five years in prison when he is sentenced on January 25th, according to Tom Morozak, a spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Carey had run a bureau that investigated cases of suspected abuse of inmates by deputies at the sheriff's department, which runs the nation's largest jail system. In May, a grand jury indicted Kerry and former undersheriff Paul Tanaka in a case stemming from a long-running federal investigation of corruption and suspected abuse of inmates at two downtown Los Angeles jails. As part of his agreement with the prosecutors, Kerry pled guilty to lying on the stand during the trial last year of a sheriff's deputy, later found guilty of trying to obstruct the investigation. The deputy was one of seven sheriff's officers convicted for their roles in blocking the probe. In exchange for his guilty plea and for his cooperation, prosecutors have dropped charges of conspiracy and obstruction of justice. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. A Colorado man reminisced Monday about a simpler time when he only masturbated to still images on the internet. 36-year-old Timothy Barchuk, who now says he requires multiple streaming hardcore videos just to get excited, willfully reflected on the days of waiting for slowly loading images of naked women to appear. Look at this picture of Phoebe Cates. Sure, you can pull up in two seconds now. Back in the old days, you'd have to wait for it to materialize on your screen pixel by pixel. It's not about her tits, which are nice, but it's about waiting for them. Nowadays, you can pull up eight different videos of anal sex at once. Who cares? In local news, the person who will one day become the warlord ruler of what was once Nebraska is born in an Omaha hospital. And in other news, a man and woman get drunk and blow $30,000 in one night. A lonely college student calls up his mom to talk about Harold and Kumar, and another dead body is tossed on a heap somewhere. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. It's the live Thursday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark, Daryl, and Johnson. That's right, it's Ian's night off, so uh, you get us. I'm in the big boy chair tonight. And, uh, you know, in, in talk radio, they say come with your big gun um, early on, the big story you've got, and I think you've got it, Daryl. It's uh, my borders. Yeah, I thought you were so... just trying to brag again about yourself or something and being on in the big chair tonight. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so there's... The opportunity, you know. There's the claim that a nation can't exist without borders, and therefore nations need to restrict who can come across the borders. I've heard that many times, and I've historically, um, you know, I thought that this was kind of a specious argument. I mean, nations existed a great deal without sort of, uh, you know, controlling who's crossing borders. I thought that was just for those doctors. No, well, those Donald, doctors without borders. Yeah. Donald Trump recently made a statement. 
A nation without borders is not a nation. Therefore, there must be a wall across the southern border. This claim... What about the Lakota Nation or the Sioux Nation or... Yeah, not a nation, uh, according to Donald Trump, because not a, they don't have borders. They're certainly not a state in the same way. So certainly not then the state of or the nation of Islam. Right. Even though not not they, not a not a state. They're not, not a, a nation, nation, even though they have nation right in their title of their. Yeah, not not a nation. Nationwide insurance, not a nation. <laughs> uh, the claim is simply false. This from the Washington Post. Even if we assume that a nation cannot exist without borders, itself a contestable claim because many nations have historically had unclear or contested boundaries, it does not follow that the maintenance of borders requires immigration restrictions. In reality, borders have a wide range of other functions besides regulating immigration. Now, what? who's uh, writing this? The Washington what? Uh, the Washington Post. Okay. So just because they're saying, no, that the statement is incorrect doesn't mean they're advocating for open borders. They're simply saying, yeah, this argument stinks. Right. In reality, borders have a wide range of other functions. For example, they define the territory within which a government's laws are binding and also the land area within which it may deploy its armed forces without getting permission from another government. If all immigration restrictions were abolished tomorrow, tomorrow, borders could readily continue to facilitate these and other purposes. A nation- I'm not sure. So I'm thinking about this. Um, I know the United States went to Panama and they got Noriega and they and they brought him back here. Um, does that mean that it's uh, you know how how if the laws only apply inside the boundaries of the nation, how are they able to go to another country and get somebody and drag them back? Because bigger military. That's what right. Like you see, the United States. Um, currently carries the biggest stick yes. and since nations and states um, are organizations that claim an, um, a monopoly on violence in a given geographic area the one that has the largest military would be able to claim the monopoly right. outside of their own borders yes. and you know essentially be the world's government so many people um, don't want the united states to be involved in a one world government when in fact the united states is the one world government a nation does not exclude peaceful migrants, or rather, a nation that does not exclude peaceful migrants can still bar invading armies. The history of the United States also shows that borders and nations can exist without immigration restrictions. Until the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, the federal government did not forbid voluntary immigration. This is really important. This country existed for about a hundred years without any kind of rules regarding immigration at all. Yes. And in fact... So when people get to say, my people came over here and it was legal, it wasn't legal, it just, there weren't any laws. Yes. And the Constitution, okay. and, and this is something that a lot of people, they'll say, well, the Constitution says, and then they make up a bunch of stuff that the Constitution doesn't actually say. The Constitution never gives Congress the power to f regulate or forbid immigration. No, but naturalization it does, right? Yes. And it specifically says that there's to be a uniform process. And right now there's not a uniform process. The article here continues. Oh, it just depends on how you define uniform, Daryl. The, the article continues. It says, instead, it, that being the Constitution allowed uh, the restriction of eligibility for citizenship, but did not forbid migration. Some state governments had laws excluding immigrants, but not the federal government, and migrants excluded by one state could still potentially enter through another. If we take Trump's theories and others like it seriously, the Declaration of Independence did not make the United States a nation because it did not establish any immigration restrictions. Even worse, it condemned George III for obstructing, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners and refusing to pass others to encourage their migration hither. Indeed, or rather, instead of celebrating Independence Day on July 4th, we I should commemorate the enactment of the Chinese Exclusion Act. <laughs> this is important because, um, was that on the same day, July 4th also? No. Okay. Um, so this is important is, is that... Back, you know, when 
this country was being formed, they wanted more people to move here. And there's uh, Milton Friedman made it very clear um, in his quote that, look, any country is happy to have immigrants coming into it as long as there isn't a welfare system. Once that person becomes a burden, who the heck wants a bunch of poor people moving here that we're going to have to pay for or who are going to be voting against our interests or whatever? Well, that's what it all comes down to is we don't have a immigration problem in this country. We've got a welfare problem. Yes. The, the, when somebody comes here from some other country, you know, for whatever reason, some, people think it's a good idea to give them a bunch of free stuff from the government. Well, it's not free. We, we all have to pay for it. And that's what makes people angry. It's honestly, that's it. I mean, there's the, um, there's the, they took our jobs argument, but I, you know, that if you're losing your job to someone that doesn't know anybody in this country and barely speaks the language, then you probably deserve to lose that job because it's a job that was probably designed for a high school kid to have as his very first job to get some work experience so that he could then improve himself before becoming an adult. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what it come. It, it does come down to those issues is that, you know, you always have to be improving your job skills. And if you're not, then somebody can come along and take them. There's no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, the, these a lot of people are worried, um, worried about what it does to the economy. What it does to the economy is every one of these people that moves here needs to eat food. Is going to need to ride around in a car. They're going to need a place to live. They spend money. They spend lots of money. Yes. The article here continues, uh, and it continues the thought of if we take Trump's theory seriously that, you know, without immigration enforcement, then there's no border and therefore no country. That would mean that Jefferson Davis and friends would not have had to try to secede at all in 1861. Instead, they could have simply argued that the United States of America did not exist in the first place. Even today, some nations, such as— For those who don't know who Jefferson Davis is, he's the uh, uh, former president of the Confederate States of America. Yes. Even today, some nations, such as Argentina, do not restrict immigration. Few people would argue that Argentina is not a real nation, that has no borders, or that it somehow ceased to exist when it adopted a virtual open borders policy towards immigrants in 2004. The debate over immigration policy raises a number of genuinely complex issues regarding the economic, political, and cultural effects of migration and the extent to which it is morally permissible to make immigration policy without considering the freedom and well-being of would-be immigrants themselves. There are restrictionist arguments that deserve serious consideration, such as the claim that immigrants might create a dangerous political externality that reduces the quality of public policy, but the assertion that we must restrict immigration because nations cannot exist without borders is not one of them. Very good. What are your thoughts on this? Um, does the Washington Post make a good point, or is it just all a bunch of open borders pandering? 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Let me give my position on uh, immigration when we get back to 855-453. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. 
On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's 855-450 free. We're talking about, uh, well, it's an article from the Washington Post saying that the argument that a nation isn't a nation without some kind of immigration controls is, you know, just not an accurate argument. It's, uh, it's an inaccurate argument, and I think it's worth pointing out because a lot of people use it. So, um, but before we get into this and, uh, and get to the calls, I want to tell you about Liberty Stickers. So if you want to reach a lot of people with the ideas of Liberty, you can do it from the back of your car with LibertyStickers.com. You can reach thousands of people um, with uh, just a bumper sticker, you know, that you love to read them. I mean, I've inched forward at stoplights just to read what the bumper stickers say. So you can check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic Liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. It's libertystickers.com. It's, uh, real quick, it's uh, it's Mark. Daryl. And Johnson. Go to Nate calling in from St. George. Nate, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just want to talk about immigration. I hear all your points. Uh, I want to say some things that uh, nobody seems to talk about. Uh, first off, uh, you um, talk about open borders, but it's a singular, open border. Uh, we want to talk about people who get off planes who have 
any, from anywhere in the world, you have to have a passport, a visa identification, and checked by the TSA. And um, I want to say, supporting Trump on this one, very one issue, even if I don't support any of the others, which a lot of the others um, could be somewhat socially insignificant compared to immigration policy, um, there's a lot to be said that we're only talking about one border, and we're talking about one group of people that are doing immigration, or what I should say, illegal immigration. We're talking about Hispanics moving in. We're not talking about Europeans, Australians, Russians, Chinese. Um, Actually, you are talking about, about Chinese. Uh, Chinese are a very large segment of the population that's illegal. Yep, yeah, they're not coming in illegal. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're, You're they're incorrect. Not coming in illegal. There's a giant... They're, uh, there's a giant uh, a moat between us and them called the Pacific Ocean, and they still get over it. <laughs> Correct. So when, when they come in, either by boat or by plane, they have to have a passport, a visa, and be checked by TSA security. That's not the same. Not the if they border. sneak in on a boat. The vast majority um, of the um, the vast how, majority of how the, many times do they do that? They do, and, and they, they do they it all the time. That. We have. We're, I'm sorry. We have. We Nate, have border patrol incorrect. on boats. You're incorrect. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. How People many, are getting here Chinese? illegally. You're tell me millions. I'm telling you, millions of Chinese are hundreds here. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese. By hundreds of thousands of Chinese not come true. here by boat and plane, and they do not get checked. Those are the numbers that I was able to find. Um, you know, when I researched this, uh, this I, topic, I the I Center for too, Immigration Studies. Happen. Nate, why the, do you think we? Why do Nate. you think we have a guard? On, in boats, we have guards that guard against that. The easiest way to come across is through the Mexican border. We all know that. They might as well stick an international airport on the Mexican border so you can just walk over. Nate. Because you can fly into Mexico and just walk right on over, and we'll give you everything. Nate, the That's how it works. We're talking about one border because I know everybody else who's getting off a plane. I know this. Everyone that gets off a plane has to show a passport, they have to have a visa, they have to even sign a piece of paper saying where they're staying and a phone number. They, then they go through a security check. How can we do that to people uh, and, and then say we got we support You know, you're just on borders? the same no, talking point. You haven't even borders. acknowledged can, that can, there's can hundreds I give you... of thousands of people from China that are here illegally. Okay. Can, Nate, can I give wait you... a second. No, just a second. There's another bunch of bull crap that you believe. You believe that people come here illegally and much more so of the million, ten, more than 10 million and maybe 20 million illegal um, people who are in this country illegally are came here legally and just overstayed a visa. So don't um, assume. Yeah, well, there's, there's people who. There's no, the, people the who majority do that. Fact, of them. I would suggest them. that. The majority of them. I would suggest them. that. I would tell everybody around the world come to America, even if you get a passport or visa, come to America and overstay your visit because they're, they, they obviously, we in America don't care if you overstay your visit. We don't care. Can, can I give I some statistics now? We might as well make a, a worldly statement. Come on up, come on over and overstay your visit because we're not we're not throwing you back out. We're not gonna deport you. So we might as well do that. So basically what we're talking about here is we're curing what I would say curing an uh, an immigration racism. Because we're treating what we're talk what Donald Trump is talking about is treating is treating the the, the Mexican Hispanics on the southern border, the same as the Russians, the Europeans, the Australians, and everyone else around the world, treat them the same by, by making them have a passport and visa. There's only two ways to go about it. Either everyone has to have an identification, and you know that's that different not a countries have different that's agreements as far asking. as visas go, right? I mean, like, you know, coming from Mexico is significantly well, more difficult than it is, is to come from— ID. Am I talking— look, are we, to, I, look, I let you talk. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to a yeah, visa, yeah, yeah. it's more I difficult got, to get more. a visa. I've got more. Well, then go ahead. It's obvious you don't want to hear okay, anything well, I okay, have to say. You just talk about, while I'm talking. All we're talking about— No, we're all not we're talking. You're talking. An identification. We're talking about we require an identification. Who the is we? I don't want any identification from these people. Why? That means they can do a crime on you or your family and get away with it. They, because there's no ID. 
That's what it means without an identification. The so hold on, hold on. So can. so if so somebody they has will, an ID, they, they they're can. not a, they're like physically not able to commit crime. People that have identification commit crimes yeah. all the time. Of course they do. Of course they do. But they get they if if you got identification, you're going to get busted. If you don't have any identification, you can don't still know who get you busted. Are. You can do as many crimes as you want. You could you could there do as many. There are people with identifications that do a bunch of crimes too. I'll change my name every. I'll change my name every time I want. I want you know I do a crime. Change my name. They're not going to deport me. They're not even going to put me in jail because they don't know who I am. It's not a lot to ask for. For an identification. Absolutely. One of the difficulties. That is that's fine. And you know, the reason you don't get that uh, that information is because the United States government makes it illegal for them to immigrate. If you just said, hey, we're going to start a new program, we'll call it the blue card. And with the blue card, you can come here. You won't get any free government programs, not one. You'll have to pay your way for everything. But you can come here, you can uh, make a living, and all you have to do is register and you'll get your blue card and you'll be able to work. And at that point, you'll have all the information you need. So, so you are suggesting that uh, German, Swedish, Norway, Denmark, that everyone across the across the border should be able to fly into America without a passport, identification, visa, or anything. They should be able to do that. Did you hear anything I said? I said if they wanted to immigrate to this country, they should um, they they should be able to apply for a new form of uh, identification called a blue card, which would allow them to stay here and work. And, um, you know, not get any government programs. That's what I said. Name? What's can that? You, since you don't have an identification, because I, you didn't God, have I don't, one, I, I'm sick. Then this guy's not up, even listening you to you. You're having, he's, he's talking with a different talk show host. I don't even know what he's doing. I, I'm so frustrated. <laughs> 855 450 free. It's 855 450 3733. It's just those darn Mexicans coming across the border. That's the only problem. You've got to make them equal, keep them all out. My name's Clyde, age 59, and I reside in Florence, South Carolina. The doctors diagnosed me as having clogged arteries. Felt like I was carrying heavy concrete blocks around my feet and legs. I started taking heart and body extract as directed. It is less than three weeks, and I'm like a young man again. It's unbelievable that an herbal formula can work so fast and so powerfully. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Thursday, gold continues to rise, up $10 to $1,147 per ounce. Silver has also gained 23 cents to $15.60 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at 235 US dollars. Roberts and Roberts has been helping people to buy precious metals for nearly 40 years. If you would like more information, give us a call 800-874-9760 or visit our website at rrbi.co.
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. A scary day in Virginia after a mass shooting at the offices of Slash Forward Marketing. Management described the violent scene as incredibly inopportune if the company wants to hit its sales goals. Gunshots were first heard around 9.40 a.m. VP of Sales Ken Miller placed the first 911 call. 911, what's your emergency? Hello? Someone is shooting everyone at our office. Can you guys do something about this? We really can't afford to lose focus right now. The alleged shooter, Brian Henderson, a Slash Forward employee, was described by Miller as a so-so salesman and a, quote, candy ass who obviously couldn't howl with the big dogs. Slash Forward management said the company is rattled to the core by this poorly timed shooting. It was horrible, really. But hashtag pray for Slash Forward is trending and... We are getting tons of media exposure, so I, th I think we're going to survive. Donations for the families of victims are pouring into the company website, as are applications for the 18 job openings listed immediately after the shooting. This is the Onion News Network. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Zero three seven three three. There's no no end to the uh, conversations that we will get when we bring up the topic of inf um, immigration. It is a contentious topic here on Free Talk Live, and um, yeah, I I believe that free people should be able to cross the borders of free countries freely. But I know that uh, a lot of people don't believe that. Right. And those people basically are not recognizing that we don't have a free country. Well, yeah. I mean, that much is obvious. And you wanted to read some statistics. We'll get to that real quick. I want to tell you about ProXPN. If you care about your privacy while well, on the Internet, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network that encrypts all of your online data before it even gets to your Internet service provider. ProXPN does all of it right Um excuse me, does does all of it um, right, offering OpenVPN, the gold standard of uh, network encryption. They have apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux. Plus, unlike the other guys, ProXPN keeps no logs of your activities whatsoever. Now, ProXPN has even more servers than ever before, giving you greater speed and security. They accept credit card and even Bitcoin. You can get 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of the account when you buy an annual um, account with our code FTL50. It can end um, up being cheaper uh, per month than a good cup of coffee. You keep on hearing about our online privacy and how it's getting infringed. Go to ProXPN.com right now. Use code FTL50. Take back the privacy that is your right. ProXPN.com. So according to the Pew Hispanic Center, 52% of illegal immigrants were from Mexico. 26% were from other Latin American countries. 12% from Asia. So the, the last caller was saying, there's no illegal immigrants coming over from Asia because they all have passports. Well, no, according to at least one study, 12% of illegal immigrants are from Asia. 5% are from Europe and Canada. 3% are from Africa and the rest of the world. I've seen enough CD mystery and, you know, cop movies to see that, uh, to know that uh, they smuggle people over in shipping containers all the time. It yes. could be that. I don't know the answer to that, but I can tell you that between – I'm just looking at some uh, new Pew report confirms visa overstays or driving illegal immigration. They give uh, four countries right here off the top um, saying that essentially 76 to 93 percent of the illegal immigrants from those countries have overstayed their visas. Now, none of those countries are um, Mexico or China, but I'm just saying that – you know, there are a lot of people in this country that are here illegally that are here because they overstayed visas. And so we do have all of their information. The three of us know someone who is here under that circumstance who's seeking political asylum, and his lawyer recommended that he overstay the visa while going through the process 
because that makes it easier for him to wind up staying if his uh, you know petition for asylum is granted. Whereas if he were to go back to where he originally came from, then it would make it a lot more difficult for him to actually get here when he is given asylum. Got it. Let's go to um, Skype. You can call us on LRN.FM. That's our username um, on Skype. It's uh, Hugo calling in from Mexico. Hugo, you're on Talk Live. Hello there. Um, I just wanted to chime in a bit uh, on the uh, this idea the previous, previous caller was talking about, that somehow the southern border is, uh, you know, wide open for people to enter. It's, it's just simply not true. I live in Mexico, and I have a of course, a Mexican passport and a U.S. visa. And if I wanted to go up there to the, uh, I'm in Mexico City, but if I wanted to go buy a land or uh, fly up to the, uh, near the border, Tijuana, say, for instance, I'd have to present my passport and I have to present my visa if I wanted to cross over. So otherwise, I would probably die in the river or on, or on the desert if I wanted to just cross well and nilly. And people do that all the time. Yep. That's true. They survive, but, some yeah, of them. But, Mm-hmm. Many of them. Yeah, but it's mm-hmm. yeah, they do, and they get smuggled on on cargo trucks all yeah. the time too. They're treated terribly, but, <laughs> basically modern slavery. Yeah, that's true, and they you know, they treat it like, like uh, uh, cattle on 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 a car on a cargo ship with no air, and and there there's been cases where they have uh, died of suffocation inside those uh, cargo uh, trucks, and uh, with the southern border, there's this. Um, if you live if you live uh, very close to the border, there's a, a different visa or a different car that you use to cross over. If you live in the uh, the border zone, but in, in any case, either if you are a border uh, um, you know, living in a border zone or if you're coming from anywhere else in the country, they will ask you if you're going to uh, go in, inside the U.S. more than I don't know if it's 50 miles or 100 miles, and then you have to complete complete the whole process as though you were coming through. Um, um, on plane, on a plane, and um, that's the reason you got those checkpoints in, uh, you know, in, in San Diego and and McAllen and those those places there. That's the reason. That's the excuse they have for uh, having those checkpoints, and they would totally deport you. So, um, does it? What's it like crossing the border from Mexico? I mean, is it difficult? You have the uh, the, the visa and the, the the passport and that sort of thing, right? Yeah, you have to go there, and there, there's uh, there's bridges uh, over the river, the river in different points, and you have to go through immigration, and uh, you won't come through if you don't have a visa. Um, people do that uh, do that uh, trip every day. There's people who work in San Diego and um, in um, and live in Tijuana and the other way around, and they do the, they do the trip every day. So That'll it's, add some it's time not that commute. slow. <laughs> that'll that'll add something to your commute, huh? Hugo, thanks for the call. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> My brother lives in San Diego and his dentist has an office in Tijuana. And some of the people that live in San Diego that don't have medical insurance will go to his Tijuana office because he's able to charge a lower fee because there's not all of the regulations and all kinds of other whatnot that would wind up increasing the cost if they got it done in San Diego. It's fascinating. Let's go to Colin. Colin in from California. Colin, you're on Free Talk Live. How you doing, Mark? All's well. What's on your mind? Um, there, you know, what makes me laugh is when they talk about our border problem, they say, let's put troops on the border. Let's build a wall. This is insanity. It's so simple to, to cure if they really wanted to. Okay. All they have to do is make sure anybody coming in this country, if you don't, if you didn't immigrate here, immigrate here illegally, legally, you cannot get employed. Or, and definitely, we shouldn't be giving them any kind of uh, welfare and that kind of stuff on my tax, where I have to pay for it. Nobody gives me a free ride. I've lived my entire life, fifty-six years, and never gotten a free nothing in this country. But yeah, yet you're I, I think me that that I would... have to pay taxes for them to have they, I, my teeth are rotten out of my head because I can't afford the dentist because I would prefer to give my kid a college education versus take care of my teeth. But yet I'm supposed to give 
these illegal immigrants whatever medical care when I can't afford it for myself, actually. Yeah, I don't know you what know, kind of what medical care they get about. and what kind they don't. I mean, I couldn't, I could not speak to it, but I can tell you that a lot of hardworking Americans do not, are not interested in paying uh, for any old buddy that comes to this country to get a bunch of free stuff. But Colin, yeah, it, are, it, just out of curiosity, it's slavery. Hold it's slavery. On. Let me ask you this. It is. Um, when you force somebody to pay for something that they did not, uh, were not interested in paying for, right. when, when it I is a form of slavery. When I got to pay for their free ride, it's slavery. But there are yeah. other people that are getting a free ride, Colin. What do you think about that? I, I, I don't agree with anybody getting a free ride. Nobody, even the citizens of this country. My brother's one. He sits here and gets a free ride. He pretends he's disabled. I have another guy that, oh, they, they just fake it, you know, and they get a free ride. But I got news for him. It can't last. It's mathematically impossible to sustain this kind of stuff. And these people are in for a real rude awakening when the when the whole country comes crashing down financially because it's mathematically impossible to pay this stuff. I so, agree. Colin, I, I've got a question for you about something you said. You said that anybody that is in this country illegally should not be allowed to get a job. Did, did I hear right. that correctly? So yes, you yes. Well, you want to you want to use the force of government to prevent someone from hiring no, who they no, want to no, no, hire? I'm not. Okay, well, okay. Listen, I'm a, I've got hold, a machine hold your job. thought. I've hold your a, hold your listen. thought. We'll get your answer in the next segment. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. It's always immigration that gets them lit up. Eight fifty five four fifty free free talk live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Uh. Getting a good view of a sore throat can be difficult, but the new doctor-recommended sore throat exam kit from SayAwNow.com makes it easy. A first-of-its-kind scientifically designed oral retractor to relax the tongue, minimize gag reflex, and increase visibility. Our Made in the USA kit also includes a medical-grade reference chart, easy-to-use website and apps so that you're one click away from unparalleled sore throat information. Click SayAwNow.com. SayAwNow.com, a must-have for your family's medical preparedness. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. The number is 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. And uh, you can call us on Skype. The username is lrn.fm. You'll have to send a request if you've never done it before, but it should take me about five minutes to approve that, and you'll be good to go. So it's 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live, or lrn.fm on Skype. We were just talking to Colin, who uh, looks like he's holding on here. That's a good thing. And, uh, Daryl, you had a question for Colin. Let me um, – you you repeat that. And yeah, then, so then – Colin was making a point about immigrants and if someone comes into the United States and they don't go through all of the proper channels that can be very costly and very time consuming, that no one that has a business in the United States of America should be allowed to hire that person. And I'm simply asking if that is what Colin actually stands for, that he believes that there should be some government entity that uses force to prevent someone from hiring the person that they wish to hire. Colin? Well, when it gets to the extremism that it is now, if we don't do something like that, what do you think the future is going to entail? The future will entail our nation being bankrupted. Don't you see that? What's the bankruptcy? aspect what's going to okay bankrupt? well because because they're coming here and okay now you okay i say if i i can't go to mexico unless i can prove i have money and an income before they let me immigrate there do you understand that yeah usually they okay, have some kind of, the but i don't really care what the other country's rules are they don't claim, yeah i know you they don't, don't claim to be like, land of the free and home of the brave okay Okay, but they do they do have enough sense to protect their own future, where apparently we don't in this what country. Is, what I mean, is bad? But Colin, here, uh, let me ask you this question. What is what is going to jeopardize the future of this country by letting people come here and work, a, work and build a better life for themselves? Okay, right. Like I was starting to tell you before the break, I have a machine shop, and I've worked with Mexicans all my life, and I like them. I have good friends that are Mexican. But now, and my wife used to think the way you guys do, oh, we got to let them come here. And Okay, but now she sees it's driving us out of business. We can't maintain a business. I've had to move and downsize, and, and I'm hanging on by my fingernails now because I can't compete with this low wages and, and pay my mortgage. And like I said, I can't even afford uh, uh, medical insurance because of this. So See, this is there's, a, there's a couple of different ways that uh, businesses get sort of outcompeted, and it's not always immigration. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, young people, for instance. Technology, um, and, and innovation. innovation. I, mean, I, run, I run circles around most people. I, I, I'm not saying that you're bad at your job. I'm just pointing oh. out that there's, uh, there's some things that change in the marketplace. And so, for instance, you're not proposing that um, people be – uh, have a limit on the amount of children that they're allowed to have. I mean, somebody could have a whole no, bunch no, of children. Don't put words they can, in my mouth. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not no, claiming you I are. Didn't, I didn't even make a hand at that. You're putting words in my I'm mouth. I'm not putting words in your mouth. Yeah, Listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying that you're not saying that. 
So I would also okay. say you don't want to limit um, technology. So like the the blacksmiths went out of business. You, I mean, you know, being a uh, welder, blacksmith is about the closest thing um, historically to that position. Blacksmiths went out of business when cars came along because they weren't making yeah, horseshoes but We're not talking anymore. cars. We're talking people. We're talking people crossing the border at, that are going to undercut the – See, it's just like we can't let China import goods here without putting a tariff on them because they'll drive our industry bankrupt. Yep, that's, it's real simple. Well, that's what that is. It's uh, economic protectionism. It's uh, it's controlling labor crossing borders. Uh -huh. In the case of China, it's controlling things okay. that cross borders. And everything and, and that we comes— did that. That's what made us the strongest nation on earth when we used to do that. And instead of taxing our own citizens, we taxed the goods coming in, leveled the playing field, and that's what paid for our government instead of robbing our own citizens. I don't know that you're correct on that statement, so let me um, rebut that and tell you that I think that what made the United States the strongest country in like the 50s, if that's what you're referring to, is the fact that... Oh, well, way before the 50s. When are you talking about? We're talking about? through the 30s and on, yeah. The 30s yeah, was, a, was a depression, and um, it wasn't a strong country at all at that point. People are going and, around begging for food. Well, yeah, because we had the Federal Reserve in 1913, yeah, and then... Uh, 18 years later, 16 years later, look, we had the, the Great Recession because of the, the crooked monetary system we have. <clears throat> but anyway, this is old school elementary yep. stuff. Anyway, we I can't. I appreciate let, the call, like Colin, I say, Thank you. Hey, okay, why don't we just duplicate their, their immigration policies? I don't, want the, I don't want a stinking banana republic. That's why, Colin. Well, that's what you're, you're going to allow it by, by saying, hey, they come one and come all. What and evidence no do you have? Just, there is no evidence to support that. that. That did not happen before 1882 when the very first federal immigration law came into effect. In 1882, there was not, you know, like this third world existing in the United States when anybody could show up that wanted to. Yeah, that uh, that occurred during the, the midst of the Gilded Age when, uh, you know, the workers, workers, uh, uh, compensation doubled um, it, in a period of time much more quickly than it ha ever had historically in any other country on earth. Um, it's uh, you know, the United States experienced that during sort of la laissez-faire when hands were off. I don't think we need a new government bureaucracy to make sure that small businesses ha can fill out a whole bunch of paperwork to make sure that the people that they have working for them are um, you know from the right plot they of land. Have jumped through the correct hoops and hurdles and were born in the right place. Yep. I, as a small business person, please, please do not put some new government regulation on me so that I have to, um, you know, fill out pieces of paper for every person I come in contact with and want to do business with. I'm just not interested in playing cop for no money for you people. Mark, the that's next, not land of the free, the, home of the brave. The next time you ask me to pig sit for you, I'm not showing you government documents. There you go. Uh, let's go to Ron calling in from North Carolina. Ron, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, you guys. Um. Yeah, first I want to say that I consider myself a libertarian, you know, uh, social, liberal, fiscal conservative, you know, cop stuck, all that kind of stuff. I've and heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but uh, when it comes to this open border discussion, and we, we discussed it before when you were, you know, talking about libertarians in general and open borders, I, I think that we have to have some kind of control over our borders. I mean, okay. Some um, kind of control. I'm was, willing to talk about that. As long as— um, All right. Well— well, uh, you all you got to do is uh, look at some of the news clips from the uh, people over in Europe. The four quarters are being flooded. They've got uh, yep. camps set up, tent camps, all that stuff. They do, and, and let me address sort of that That's because that's really important, Ron. Over in Europe, if you touch that soil, you're going to get all kinds of benefits. I mean, you get a bunch, well, of, bunch of stuff for free. That. I understand that, and that's essentially the way it is here. And yeah. even if you did cut back on the welfare system, just the fact that you're here you're going to get medical attention. You're going to have indigent care that's going to run off the bills for the uh, hospitals that they're already, well, you know, uh, uh, going bankrupt. You're also going to uh, tax if, the school system. If, if, I, the, if uh, I'm not clear, I don't believe somebody who comes here should cost the taxpayers one penny, and that includes uh, hospitals not having to treat them. I think that those are the oh, sort I, of things that churches should be doing. I think that the Catholic Church and other churching or, um, religious organizations will step up and begin providing education for um, these students, and I think that they'll provide medical care of some sort of rudimentary level. I don't think or, that there's well, any obligation to for, for anybody here to pay for somebody who wants to build a better life for themselves and come here. I don't think there's any obligation for us to pay uh, for one, one thing for them. I agree with you completely on that, but that ain't never going to happen. You're always going to have people. Well, neither gonna, is <laughs> neither is a border but, fence, but people love to talk about it. 
I mean, the, All right, well, the, let me the, and the people that want to build the fence, well. they only want to build one fence. That they want to build one on the smaller border down south. They don't want to build one along the what is it like four thousand mile, five thousand mile border with Canada? Yeah, the what five percent oh. of the uh, illegal immigrants are Canadian. What are we going to do about them? Well, five percent as opposed to the ninety percent that are or eighty something percent that you quoted earlier that are coming from Latin America. I think it was Mexico, six. Guatemala, Guatemala. Fifty-two percent from Mexico, twenty-six from other Latin American countries. So, um, all right, yeah, so get close to eighty. More. Yeah, and right, if you say I mean, I, them Central Americans, then uh, it's about eighty percent. Yeah, right. And right, if, we, if we're, that I want to go, go ahead. Another thing to consider too is that uh, you were talking about um, high school kids that are getting their first jobs and whatnot. I mean, there is a lot of high school kids that would love to get jobs, you know, working in landscaping or working in um, uh, painting or you know, getting uh, getting their toe into the construction industry. And the fact is that it's next to impossible. Now, maybe different up in New Hampshire, but down here in North Carolina, to drive by any Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's, and there's day workers that are just lined up waiting to get, to, you know, a few hours worth of work. There's not a chance in hell that a uh, high school graduate or a high school dropout that's trying to get a start in a, you know, uh, a trade is going to be able to get that. You know, starting a landscaping business, next to impossible because you're being undercut by, a lot well, of I wouldn't things. expect that a high school student's going to start a business, but um, you know the, the way to compete yeah. against other people is uh, through pricing. And the problem is, is that we make people who are here illegally, we allow them to work outside of the system, so they can price themselves below minimum wage. High schoolers can't. And all right, so it almost sounds like you know that you are in, you know in favor of businesses being forced to hire non illegals if you, if they're willing to work for less than uh, the minimum wage. Than, uh, I'm against the minimum wage, pay. Ron. <laughs> Thanks for the All call. Right, uh, anyway. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Breathe it in, kid. Every three months, we install these air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are priced to save us more money. And Granger's got close to 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from, in stock and ready when we need them. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash filters or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.49 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,142 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. 
Antiwar.com reports fighters from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, attacked Turkish military forces Wednesday in a roadside bomb attack in the nation's southeast, killing eight soldiers. The attack came after a new round of Turkish airstrikes against Kurdish sites in the region along the Iraq border. Turkey launched its first attacks against PKK targets in Iraq late last month, ending two years of ceasefire and launching a new round of fighting, which has seen both sides escalating precipitously. The main fighting is in southeastern Turkey. Also on Wednesday, there was an attack on the palace in Istanbul, with the number of casualties there as yet uncertain, though no fatalities have yet been reported. Police reported they had detained a pair of people in that attack. So far, there was no claim of responsibility in Istanbul, but officials say the two they arrested had previously been affiliated with the Marxist-Leninist DHKPC, obviously meaning they are treated as the prime suspects. The PKK might have been behind it too, as they've recently launched some attacks in Istanbul. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a column by Human Rights Watch released Wednesday claims Egypt's new counterterrorism law threatens basic human rights. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi issued an anti-terrorism law on August 15th, which grants prosecutors greater power to arrest suspects and withhold them from due process, as well as the ability to execute deep and potentially indefinite surveillance of potential terrorists without needing a court order to do so. Nadim Hari, Deputy Middle East and North Africa Director for for Human Rights Watch says that President al-Sisi's decree takes Egypt one step further towards a permanent state of emergency that could see basic civil disobedience punished by heavy sentences, including death. Among the acts that the new law criminalizes are the publication or promotion of terrorism-related news that contradicts the Defense Ministry's official statements and equalizes punishment for suspicion and execution of a terrorist crime. The law also erodes time limits for prosecuting terrorist acts, meaning there is no expiration date for suspected or committed crimes linked to terrorism to be tried in court. The organization claims the new definition far exceeds the definition adopted by the United Nations Security Council in 2004 adding also that the new law counters the basic idea of international human rights law that requires legislation to be precisely written so to avoid its arbitrary use in prosecuting a crime. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department captain charged in a probe of jail abuse pled guilty on Wednesday to lying on the witness stand. Under his plea agreement, William Thomas Carey must cooperate with U.S. prosecutors in the case against a retired second-in-command at the department. Carey entered his guilty plea in federal court in Los Angeles and faces up to five years in prison when he is sentenced on January 25th, according to Tom Morozak, a spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Carey had run a bureau that investigated cases of suspected abuse of inmates by deputies at the sheriff's department, which runs the nation's largest jail system. In May, a grand jury indicted Kerry and former undersheriff Paul Tanaka in a case stemming from a long-running federal investigation of corruption and suspected abuse of inmates at two downtown Los Angeles jails. As part of his agreement with the prosecutors, Kerry pled guilty to lying on the stand during the trial last year of a sheriff's deputy, later found guilty of trying to obstruct the investigation. The deputy was one of seven sheriff's officers convicted for their roles in blocking the probe. In exchange for his guilty plea and for his cooperation, prosecutors have dropped charges of conspiracy and obstruction of justice. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Mere days before his upcoming relocation to Denver, Colorado, four-year Chicago resident Paul Marston admitted today that he wished he had taken a little more time to truly loathe the city he has lived in for nearly half a decade. You know, I've been here for a couple years, but now that I'm finally leaving, I realize I never really got to hate this place. 
Marsden confirmed that in the time he's lived in the city, he never quite managed to explore his own shitty neighborhood, adding that he regrets never getting to know the stuck-up workers at the cafe down the block, never visiting the overpriced bodega on his corner, and never becoming violently ill from the food at the crappy Mexican place across the street from him. You know, I lived right next to that bar for four years, and I just wish I took more time to abhor the disgusting smell that hits you every time you walk by. I'd always heard this place blows. Guess it's a shame I never got to hate it like I should. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Yeah, Free Talk Live, what do you say? It's Mark here with you. Daryl. And Johnson. And we have been talking about immigration, and it's always a, cont- a contentious topic here on Free Talk Live because we take a position that is marginal at best in American society. That is that um, that we need a, you know a more open, more free border policy. Obviously, that's not going to work without some kind of changes in the way things go. Um, my suggestion is that. We stop putting out a bowl of cat food every morning and then complaining that cats come and eat it. And by that, what I mean is... <laughs> That's a very good analogy. It's the analogy for all of the well social welfare programs that are out there for people who come here, um, you know, illegally or whatever, or legally or whatever, the social welfare programs that are out there for people. And, you know... Obviously, people who come here illegally are going to avail themselves of anything that they can avail themselves of. I would suspect, as a group, they probably do it less than people in their same income bracket simply because they're afraid of getting caught. But that's just me guessing. Well, and immigrants, there are statistics that show that immigrants own their own business at a higher rate than native-born Americans. Probably hard for them to get jobs. Let's go to Steve calling in from North Carolina. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. What is on your mind, sir? Uh, how you doing, bud? All's well. Uh, this, this is what's on my mind. I, I, as far as the immigrant thing, I, I'm going to get to a bigger point in a minute. But as far as the immigrant thing, I, we, we got to do we have to get some kind of control of the borders. As far as, I'm off for some you know, people coming in because, like I said, that's what makes the United States. But, you know, some of the legals, I've seen this. I'm going to give you a quick thing and I'm going to jump right to what I need to. I've seen a lady in the store, I was witness this, right behind a lady. That was, you know, Hispanic descent, not trying to point finger point nobody. I say, I got your question. But she was actually getting, you know, she had food stamps. She was getting some food. Had a husband stand behind with his arms crossed. Did you know that she, I talked to one of her friends, one of the guy's friends, she was actually buying food for his restaurant. He owns a restaurant. She was buying food with the food stamp for his restaurant, you know, like hot sauce and different grass. Because I was wondering why it was so many hot sauces and so many salts and peppers. It was, it was you know, it kind of irritated me a little bit. But listen, this is the thing I was getting to as far as the, but now, how are we going to sustain a country where we are constantly taking the jobs out of the country to make the product, to bring it back to the country, to sell it just for cheap labor purposes, which to me, you know, people say, oh, well, we've got too many rules and regulations. Listen, the people of the lower end of the scale, we deal with the same regulations. Stop complaining and just make this country. Donald Trump says a lot of good things. I don't think half of them he can do. But let's just concentrate on our country, not just trying to, you know, we're not getting no fair trade in any of these countries. We, you know, they got, we got all this stuff and they have none of ours. So I don't know how that works either, but well, that, that's just my thing for us. If we let the, instead of um, shipping the jobs overseas um, and we let the laborers come over here, then we, um, the United States, people in the United States, would benefit by having, mm-hmm. not having to do the shipping. It would drive down the cost of, of, uh, of, of the prices of the things in the store because you don't have the overhead of all that, you know, shipping stuff over there and shipping stuff back, as you were talking about. Um, so if we just let people come here and work, then it'd be cheaper, okay, but right? This, well, you got, you, like I said, there's some good points all over the place, and I, I agree with that, too. But listen to this. How can – what I'm saying as far as the country as a whole is we have all this debt and different things, and people's unemployment is so high and stuff. How can we, how can we actually gain in the traction at, at the – they're not, I'm not saying they're taking our jobs. They ain't got nothing to do with taking our jobs. I'm just saying they, the people that all the big companies are taking our jobs all season. They, we don't have a job to buy the product. So you got all these call outs for every block, every mile radius. There's the call out, whether it's used or new. I mean, I'm saying, I'm just using that for example. You know, and they're increasing the $1,000 a year, but yet salaries ain't going anywhere. And people, you know, find every excuse in the world not to pay anybody. So it's basically like, well, I'm going to make mine. And, you know, you just do what you have to do. 
And we can't. There's too much selfishness in this. There's too much of a me, me world the way I look at it. <laughs> and not, I don't well, like it. It's that, frustrating. But, um, I mean, you know, it is frustrating to see how what the divide is between, uh, you know, sort of rich and poor in this country. But when you look yeah, at sort of the. Yeah. The divide between rich and poor in the world, um, you know, the the U- people in the U.S. are doing a lot better than folks around the world. Yes, absolutely. I've been in the military. You dead on with that. That's why I said I'm not. You know, I don't know what the answer is, and I'm gonna give it a hand. But I don't listen to you because I, I I promise you, I'm trying to hear every side: liberal, conservative, progressive, independent, socialist, whoever got a stand. I'm listening <laughs> uh, because so right now we're not got the right answer. We, Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. 855 free it's 855-450-3733 you know my sem- my plan is uh it's based it's ideological and the reason is is because so far they're not stopping people from coming through the border the illegally and if you want to stop them it's going to take a police state you're going to have to put up a big wall remember small government conservatives want to put up a giant wall and man it with you know, the Border Patrol or the military or the National Guard or whatever. Well, it costs a lot of money to man a, what is that? How far is it? 2,000 miles from uh, Texas, from the Gulf of Mexico to uh, something like that. Pacific, yeah. somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 miles, I would imagine. Uh, you know, that's there's going to be a lot of people along there. Even if you put one every mile, you have to cycle them out and, you know. So hey, here's an idea, and this is not something that I'm advocating happen. But I, I kind of, you know, love the sort of irony of it. Just find a bunch of volunteers to link arms for that 2,000 miles and play a giant game of Red Rover. Anybody that can cross through the line gets to stay. <laughs> yeah, that's just what I want to do. Did you um, you heard that uh, some of the militia guys were uh, just caught in human trafficking? Um, some of the, uh, the folks <laughs> along the border trying to keep us all safe. Um, so there you go. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> let's go to, well, let's go to Bob uh, calling in from North Carolina. Looks like a lot of calls from North Carolina tonight. Uh, Bob, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, a lot of calls from North Carolina. We're pretty aware here. Um, here's the thing. Are you uh, arguing from the demographic point of view? Am I viewing? I'm sorry. Say say, say it again. You seem to have an argument. uh, I'm not sure if I'm talking to Mark Doe or Johnson. I I can tell it's not Johnson. This is Mark. uh, Yeah. Okay, Mark, listen. Are you arguing from a demographics point of view? Am I? Meaning that, well, you seem to have an argument. It seems like an argument for argument's sake. All the while, you're being uh, taken by the upper 1% that's filling the wealth. I heard another caller call in and talked about his brother and some other neighbor, and this is the problem in America. We get pitted neighbor against neighbor versus looking up in the first class or the people who have actually stolen the wealth. We have QE1, QE2, basically QE Viagra, keep it up at all costs. There was a recent article out that said that the uh, quantitative easing was a failure. So they, uh, uh, you know. That's what I'm talking about, and this is what's happening is this money is being taken up by the uber rich, and instead what happens is people call in, and your show becomes almost like COINTELPRO. You become just like CIA agitators in a sense because all you're doing is arguing for argument's sake. You're pitting one neighbor against the other neighbor. I'm arguing, of arguing for the sake about of what's freedom. Really happening here. The, my, my, my point of view is based on the ideas of liberty. So, and they have to work consistently or they don't work at all. And that's, okay, let me ask you a question. When you, when you get your paycheck, do you I stop at every house on your neighborhood? Okay, when you do, let's say that ideally, See, you, so you don't have a good point of view if you don't get a paycheck. But I'm sure somehow you earn some I own a business. You barter trade, and I know you're into Bitcoin, but let's talk about the real world instead of you little boys up there in New Hampshire. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's say that when you I spent nine years day, in prison, I'm 44 listen. years old. You call me a little boy? You Who the are hell do you think you are? And all you want to do is argue with you got a mute button, and that's You're fine. the one who <laughs> called me a little boy. You don't, under, you don't even understand that there's a 100-mile non-constitutional zone within the United States. 90% yeah, I'm, a, I'm very, very aware of it. Non-constitutional zone. Okay, here's the deal, buddy. You're a prisoner in your own country, and you don't even know it. You're trying to pick I leave all the time. Okay. When you come home and you got a paycheck, do you stop at every house on the block and drop some of your money off? And then when you get home, you say to your people, I don't have any money left over, but hey, I'm a good libertarian person. I don't know do what you you're talking that? about. 
Of course I don't do that. Don't know that. Don't know that. I can't even understand him. I I don't think he's even speaking in sounds that are audible to humans. I'm sorry, this wasn't in my CoIntel Pro uh, handbook. Um, Appreciate it. This body flipped off by everybody in this country, and you don't even have a clue. And you're sitting there saying you're not part of it. And when you say, I think only dogs can hear him at this point. not even part of the country. You don't even care to serve your country. You have no clue what it takes. And you say, we? And guess what? When the bomb drops... The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D i n o v i t e dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Thousands of people seeking home security get ripped off every day, and the home security industry wants you to believe that's your only option. They've got hordes of salesmen out there trying to scare you into signing one of their long-term contracts. You get stuck writing huge checks month after month with no way out. It's robbery by contract, and it can cost you thousands. But there's a better way to protect your home. Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe has no contracts, none. You'll get award-winning 24-7 protection, security professionals watching over your home, ready to instantly send police to the rescue for just $14.99. Per month. That's less than half what most companies charge. Protect your home the smart way. Visit simplysafedefense.com today for an exclusive 10% offer and get a free keychain remote worth $25. Only when you go to simplysafedefense.com. Simplysafedefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Yeah! 
855 450 free. It's 855 45. Excuse what? What is the number? 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Tell you real quick about Bitcoinist.net. They are um, the ultimate resource for Bitcoin industry news, reviews, education, and the latest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. Whether you want to find out about fintech or blockchain news, you can find it at bitcoinist.net. They're for the expert or the beginner. They've got all kinds of tools for you over at bitcoinist.net, including... Uh, an incredible uh, community forum, uh, of course, the breaking news, and they have uh, these uh, th- these tools, network statistic tools that allow you to uh, sort of delve into Bitcoin deeply. And, of course, a solid beginner's guide. Check them out, bitcoinist.net. We've been talking about immigration. It always brings them out. And, um, you know, I... It's it's a difficult position we have here on Free Talk Live. I know that it's scary, the idea of opening up the border and letting whoever wants to come here, come here. And it's a radical notion. What it's going to do, however, doing that is going to put a great deal of pressure on the other nations around the world, too. Yes. Open- it, it basically will wind up creating a sort of freer market among countries to where if countries want to keep their... Uh, customers, and I, I'm using air quotes around customer, uh, you know, their their tax base, essentially, you know, customers, if they want to keep those people, then they have to improve the way they operate and give them the freedom that they want. Or in the case of some countries, you know, like more socialism is what they want in Venezuela. It's what they want in other places. Right. Your country's really no good without citizens. If people run away to uh, some place that's better, it's going to put a great deal of pressure on your government. Right. This is really great for tin pot dictators when their uh, people can't go run away. I mean, it's really awesome for King Assad in Syria that his people can't run away to the United States. Because they Instead, would. they get on boats and float around in the Mediterranean hoping to find some place that will let them stay. And in a lot of cases, they wind up, you know, boats capsizing, people dying because they're trying to get to a better place. And now for the immigration thing, the way I come from this and Mark, I think I come from it a little bit differently than you do. The U.S. Constitution says that there's supposed to be a uniform rule for naturalization. And what we have now is not a uniform rule. There's certain rules and regulations for people from various countries. There's quotas and lotteries and everything else. And then even within various countries, there's different rules. And if you're a refugee, front of the line, if you're... Some yep. sports athlete, you get the front of the line. If you're a scientist, you're- then you might be middle of the line. Or if you're fleeing Cuba, all you have to do is get to dry land. Except and they're going to try to stop you. Stay. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's the part that I don't like about it. But, you know, like we, we should have a uniform rule. So let's have a uniform rule. If you get here, you get to stay here. Let's go to Stephen calling in from Utah. Stephen, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind, sir? Hi. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to say uh, I've spent two and a half years of my life in Latin America. They're great They're great people. They're really family-orientated, and I can kind of sympathize with them just because – hello? I'm listening, yeah. Oh, okay. Just because um, – uh, of the circumstances that they're in. Uh, but as far as that goes, I'd just like to say, you, you're right, it's not universal immigration. I'd like to see reform, uh, especially for Mexican citizens, just so that they target uh, families, especially. That they make it easier for families to get into the United States. Families are stable. Um, families need work. They want to work hard. Um, so that's something that, I could, that I'd like to see happen as far as immigration reform. But, um, yeah. Cool. Well, and, yeah. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right. 855 450 free. I tend to agree with him that, uh, you know, when it seems like the immigration policy is rather full. If, if, if I was in charge and I had a whole bunch of rules I had to follow, it, it seems like you would be, um, you know, at least looking to keep on board the people. 
I don't know, that got a co- college uh, degree while they were here, the doctors, and you don't want to kick out people that have gotten a good education while they're here on some kind of student visa, but, but they that's, do. Uh, that's exactly what's happening right now. And, um, you know, families, that's great. And absolutely, I think people should be able to uh, put down a certain amount of money to come in. I mean, that seems like a no-brainer if they've got, you know, yeah, let them come here and start a business. Um, the United States has a has a program for that, but it's it's kind of costly. It seems like you could do um, you do more with less. Let's go to Mike calling in from Oregon. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, folks. Um, so I'd like to talk about this immigration thing, and my view is, and I know this is this scenario is kind of more in a perfect world. I know it's not a perfect world, but I think the problem here is not people coming into the United States. It's something that hasn't been touched on at all, and that is the concept of the state and this apparatus taking money from people and giving it to those people who are coming in. And I think if you were to end that, again, this is just my opinion, but if you were to end the concept of the state and all forms of taxation, then someone who is coming into the country from, let's say, Mexico is going to want to come in with something to offer to the marketplace. So, for instance, washing cars, landscaping, uh, driving Uber. Those are all things that um, you're going to need some sort of skill to do. And if you're coming to the country, you're going to want to have something to be able to offer so that way you can get money and start a life. But what these callers are talking about is they're they're complaining about just people coming into the country and them having to pay for it, which I understand what they're saying, but they're not actually addressing the problem itself, and that is the state. That's just my, that's my opinion. Oh, I tend to agree with you, but um, I mean, you know, if, if our solution is fantastic in the sense that is a fan, in a fantasy world, yours has uh, gone in the, way, or the, the realm of phantasmagoric Right. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's a, it's a rather sweeping solution to suggest that uh, there be, needs to be a dissolution of monopoly, um, you know, a monopoly government organization. Right. So yeah. I, I understand and I'm ninety nine point nine percent positive that Mark and Johnson understand what you mean when you say the state and we need to sort of you know rethink the concept of. But there's probably a lot of people that are listening that don't necessarily understand what you mean. So can you sort of summarize what you mean by the state? The state, okay. And what I'm saying is by the state, the concept of the state is a violent monopoly. Not, It doesn't really look violent. It looks like a legitimate group of people calling themselves the state, and it is a monopoly on force. Yeah, if you don't pay them taxes, they're going to look darn they're going to look darn violent. <laughs> and the state can be a county, a city, a town, a state, a country, any organization that claims a legitimate use on the use of force where it's really illegitimate. 855-453 that's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live, your thoughts on immigration. Next. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX. Or my website, danpillett.com. Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. 
That's right. Every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of The Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's been Immigration Talk Live this evening. Everybody wants to talk about it. It's Mark here. Daryl. And Johnson. 855-453. You can save 20 to 15 to 25% on just about everything you need in your life to live. Except for, uh, we think we decided produce and gasoline so far. Um, you can get pretty much everything you need from Amazon. And th- by using Bitcoin and going through purse.freetalklive.com, you can now save 15 to 25%. We're doing it at my house. My wife's doing it. She understands it's completely. It's not that difficult to do. You could just go to purse.freetalklive.com. You sign up there. You got to get some Bitcoin. I'll tell you how to do that here shortly. Purse.freetalklive.com. I have just given you a gigantic raise. You can now get pretty much everything you need to live and get it at a discount. And that's, you know, it's not what you save. It's what you spend in life. You can buy gas cards at amazon.com. You can buy gas cards too. There you You go. Gas gift cards so you can technically buy gas let's go to randy calling in from new hampshire randy you're on free talk live what's on your mind hello i was actually calling uh to talk about uh, the free state project and the cool little thing we've got going on today what is it i uh, think i participated well, in it but why don't you tell me <laughs> uh basically today is ron paul's 80th birthday oh and, happy uh, birthday ron money yeah, and uh, he did those money bombs a few years ago, and uh, basically the Free State Project 
uh, movement of libertarians, as I'm sure many of your listeners know, moving to New Hampshire to build a society uh, of liberty-loving people, uh, limited state involvement, and all those kinds of good things. So today uh, they're doing a Steiner bomb in honor of uh, Ron Paul's birthday, and they're trying to get uh, a lot more people to actually sign on. We're now at, I think, 17,172 signers out of the 20,000 we want to get. Um, and so we're just trying to call extra attention to it today in honor of Ron Paul's birthday, and uh, he's been a, f- a friend of the Free State Project for sure, and so I um, just wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit. Who do you think the Free State Project is right for? When you think of um, you know people out there, there's a, you know, there's a certain demographic, a certain psychographic that's going to be right for the Free State Project. Who would you say it is? Um, well, it, it's right for me. It got me to move from Los Angeles uh, recently, and um, it's just for me, it's been a wanting uh, to have more control over my own life and more control over my own finances and more control over every sort of aspect of my life and not giving that up to anyone, really, you know, t- keeping that for myself and sh- sharing uh, my life with other people, certainly, but, you know, holding holding what is mine and keeping what is mine uh, has, has been really um, valuable to learn what that feels like uh, uh, quite a bit more in New Hampshire. When we moved for the Free State Project, Ian and I, um, Ian and I uh, he's my uh, business partner, we moved in 2006, so we've been here going on, it's just about 10 years now. Um, you know, I had very little hope when I was down in Sarasota, Florida, as far as, um, you know, hoping that uh, the government was going to get smaller and more responsive to people, and these sorts of things. It just seemed like, The state was out of control. Uh, I was reading all these news stories. It was depressing. And here in New Hampshire, what I found is hope. I see free staters participating in the the political system. I see them getting elected. I see things, um, you know, now and then I'll see them get a a law passed. But at this point, I'm not even looking for the laws that, uh, you know, uh, you know, give us more freedom, um, you know, undoing laws and, and those sorts of things. That's basically what they're doing is they're undoing laws by passing laws. Right. Um, it, at this point, it's stopping the new bad stuff. Every one of the 49 states out there, their government's growing. In New Hampshire, I can't say it's not growing, but it's not growing as quickly as it was. And I hope with uh, some more people that we can uh, turn it around. Now, Mark, I I will answer your question of who should move for the Free State Project. People that will exert the fullest practical effort towards the creation of a society in which the maximum role of government... And this is not saying that you know there can't be a minimum role or no government, but people that want to see the maximum role of government to be to protect the individual right to life, liberty, and property. That's the the pledge, Randy. Um, yeah, and if, uh, if you head to fspsign.org, you can sign up there. That's uh, that's where we're trying to get people to okay. go today. You got a new easier website, fspsign.org. Yeah, that's just a pretty quick rundown of sort of what the, the Free State Project is, and there's a really great video on there about uh, 101 Reasons uh, Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. And it's a kind great of video. Out, yeah, phenomenal. And so it's a really nice overview of kind of what we're doing, and, and uh, like I said, it's getting people to sign up and, and yeah, find what find what that freedom actually is. And it's uh, it's really powerful to be on, on the, the ground floor for it, I mean, to, to witness what's going on there, like you said, about, you know, laws sort of uh, giving – giving rights back to people, um, it's, it's, it's really powerful to be a part of. Randy, thank you so much for calling in and letting us know about it. So people can go to fspsign.org to get involved. Um, wh- wh- I guess what are the advantages of signing up now? Uh, well, so when 20,000 people sign on, that triggers the move. So that's when everyone is uh, who has signed on is uh, ideally going to move within five years. So you kind of get that street cred of being like, hey, I was I was an early, you know, maybe I was an early mover. I got a number before the 20,000 because I think a lot more are going to be coming when they see, you know, all the things that are happening there um, that are pro-liberty. So I think I think there's a little bit of street cred of being, uh, you know, on the ground floor uh, before everybody else comes. Yeah. There's also business opportunities there. I mean, there's you hear a number like that, 20,000 people moving. If you're into real estate or anything like that and there's businesses opening that take Bitcoin and just – there's a great community of very connected people uh, that, that you could tap into for networking, for friendships, and all kinds of other things. But it's a community that wants to grow together and show uh, how responsibly these things can all be done uh, in, in the absence of, of this uh, monopolistic force. So, Thanks so much for the call, Randy. Appreciate it. 
And if somebody is not really ready to sign and they want to find out what's happening in New Hampshire, Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. There will be a legislative action panel hosted by a sitting state rep that will go over some of the legislative stuff that's going on. There's also going to be a political action panel that I'm hosting that's going to look at ways that people can get involved, make some changes, not necessarily in the state house and not necessarily within the two-party system that we have. And I'm working on lining up some really great guests for that. A lot you of people- can find out more keenvention.info. Invention.info. A lot of people don't want to be involved in the political process. And for those folks, um, you know, there's a lot. There's still a lot. Yes. Remember, um, you know, the community you hang out with, that's important for your sort of mental well-being. And if you're if you're somebody who believes strongly in the ideas of liberty, you know what I mean when all your friends are statists and you're hanging out in a statist uh, town and you're going to, you know, statist places and you're talking to statist people you get an it's a real advantage to move to New Hampshire and have people sort of understand what you mean. Some of the old timers, um, when I first got here, I was uh, greeted by a guy named John, um, who uh, he said the first thing he said to me was, "Welcome home." You know, I'd moved from Florida. I'd lived in Florida my whole life. It is home for me in New Hampshire, and I really have uh, come to the point that, yeah, you know, this completely different lifestyle, I, I really understand what they mean now. Um, but this is for libertarians. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to move. Uh, oftentimes people want uh, more food freedom, they'll call it uh, more attachment to the earth and that sort of thing. Well, New Hampshire is the, uh, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont and Maine is the number one place for local vor- the vo- local vor economy, people buying their food right there where it's produced. So if you want to get into that kind of thing, you need customers to buy your, you know, eggs or corn or whatever it is that you're going to grow. And there are a lot of farmers markets that happen in New Hampshire. And we've moved from all different places. Daryl, you moved from? Moved from Texas. I'm originally from Alabama. And Johnson? Moved up from Florida, Connecticut. Florida and Connecticut. But by, yeah. by way of Connecticut, I moved up from Florida. So lots of people moving from lots of all over the place. Uh, Randy just called in, said he moved from California. It's free FSP sign. Dot org fspsign.org If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News and World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country. Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor, period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Katie offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free tactical scarf for a limited time with any body armor package. That's KatiArmor.com. Come and take it. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855 free it's been, well, it's been wall-to-wall -wall immigration here on Free Talk Live. We did talk about the Free State Project and their signer bomb that they've got going on right now. No pun intended on the wall-to-wall -wall reference, <laughs> right? right? Yeah, didn't even think about that. From wall to rocky wall. From, from police state project to police state project. What a great idea. People that uh, hate FDR want to start a new government program to build a giant wall along the border. Doesn't make any sense. Just another make work program, another government make work program. 855 450 free or lrn.fm on Skype. From the Daily Caller, looks like, are, are you guys familiar with the, uh, the economic freedom rankings? There's one from the Fraser Institute and another one from the Heritage Foundation. I'm aware that both of them exist. I, I don't necessarily look at them all the time, but whenever somebody mentions one or both, I will do my best to pull those up. On, the, on both of them, the United States used to be number one, and it isn't anymore. Yeah, it's not been for several years. As yeah. long as I've been looking at it, the U.S. hasn't been in like the top ten. Well, that's uh, relatively recent. The U.S. has been in the top 10 uh, within the last decade or so, but I've been looking maybe longer than you have. Um, here from the Daily Caller, a new report on the freedom of countries around the world ranks the United States at 20th, putting countries like Chile and the United Kingdom ahead of the U.S. The uh, Last year, the U.S. was ranked 17th, but a steady decline of economic freedom and rule of law has dropped the level of freedom, according to the Cato Institute, Fraser Institute, and Swiss Liberalis in, in I, you know, this is, you know, this is German or whatever it is, um, liberal, uh, liberal Liberties Institute or whatever, which created the study together. So... For those of you that wish to dismiss this notion, you need to first address the idea that the Fraser Institute and the Cato Institute, which are both organizations that are pretty economically conservative, yes, um, you know, say that the country is now less free, at least economically. It's much more difficult to rate uh, social freedoms because those, in many cases, are sort of preferential. Um, and quantifying them is difficult, um, that, kind of, that kind of thing? Uh, according, I, I 
just pulled up the Cato website, and according to the Cato website, the thing that came out was the Human Freedom Index that presents a broad measure of personal, civil, and economic freedom around the world. Really? So It was co-published by the Cato Institute, the Fraser Institute out of Canada, and the Liberales Institute from Germany. Um, this economic, it says right here, uh, last year the U.S. was ranked 17th, but a steady decline in economic freedom and rule of law. Okay, I see. So this is an all-around ranking, but they dropped because of economic freedom and rule of law. 76 indicators overall for 152 countries that are ranked. They must, maybe they've expanded the uh, the rating system because I'm familiar with the Fraser Institute's uh, Free the World list. If this is related to that, that was about where the U.S. was, was 17th the last go-round, so dropping to 20th. I mean, you don't really hear people say it's a free country anymore, right? Exactly. Um, And that's because it's getting less and less free. Now, I'm of the strong opinion that this country is sort of number one economically and, um, you know, sort of on a world global scale because of its economic freedom from the past. And you start limiting that economic freedom, you're going to start, and even in social freedoms too, but you start liberally, liber- limiting that economic freedom, you're going to see a country that's in decline. Now, I'm already of the opinion the United States in decline. Of course, I think it's economically on top, and it's the best place for me to get a, have a job and work and that sort of thing. But I'm not tied to this country in the sense that, oh, yeah, if, uh, you know, if, if there's not more economic opportunities elsewhere, well, I'd go elsewhere. Wouldn't you? There's a, yeah. I think it was uh, 30, I think I ah, don't want to make up statistics. A large percentage of Americans, if there was a better economic opportunity elsewhere, would leave the country. So what does that say to you, uh, you guys out there? What do you think about the U.S. slipping down to 20th on this, uh, this liberties chart? And there are probably a lot of people that would want to leave, but they are not in a financial position to do so. We were just talking about people coming to this country for more economic freedom, and I'll bet there are a lot of places where you can come from, right? If it's if the country's 20th and there's 200 countries or, you know, 180 countries. 193 then, members of the U.N., and then there's about another dozen or so unrecognized countries that have some level of autonomy over the territory they So claim. call it 108, 180 countries that suck worse. Um, and this is what it comes down to when you talk about uh, governments or states. Um, I like to use that term because to me, I think governments are necessary. It's just that a government could be made to compete with other governments. Yes. But when you talk about states, um, they're not very good at granting freedom. A state is an organization that claims a monopoly privilege over a given piece of land and then claims to own the labor and the land within that area. It is an organization that is descended from the old slave master paradigm from As far back as the the dawn of the agrarian revolution, it's people being coerced into certain service organizations. Well, you know, whatever government program you're thinking of right now, you're coerced into paying for it. And that means that that government organization, whatever it is, isn't going to be as efficient. It's not going to provide as good a customer service as well, something that was in competition in the marketplace. Did you hear about the uh, Yale professor that wanted to ban the word master? The Yale professor that wanted to ban the word master? Yeah, this was like a big article a couple of days ago. That no, I a, didn't see it. Yeah, there's a professor at Yale who wants to remove the word master, essentially, from the... English language yeah, or something? Yeah, and Why much. is that? Um, well, because he doesn't like... He doesn't like the connotation of the term, apparently. Did I mean, anyone tell him, yes, Master, we will do that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, he, I mean, his claim is that it's so offensive that uh, the college's black and female students uh, that have, some have had to move off camp- campus to avoid the word. What? Yeah, I don't quite know. Some um, weird things must be going on at Yale. Yeah, I would guess so. Um I guess it. Yale organizes its undergraduate students into one of 12 different residential colleges, which are core feature of the daily life of the school. Besides having their own dormitories, each residential college also has a separate dining facility, organize its own special events. I don't know necessarily how that relates to this, but uh, apparently um, Professor Stephen Davis, master of Pearson College, has said that he no longer wants his students to refer to him as Master Davis because oh. apparently that's, you know, He's a master. So that's what people call um, a professor at Yale? 
I guess. Well, yeah. it seems to me that that's a pretty old way of doing things, and sure. I don't know why they would uh, enforce that particular old weird rule. Let's go to Jimmy calling in from Vegas. Jimmy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. How's it going? Yeah, absolutely capital, sir. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, Jade Helm 15. It seems like a lot of people in the media really aren't talking about this, and more of a conspiracy uh, theory. I recently went to Wikipedia and uh, was reading the details about it, and it basically says it's an exercise in unconventional warfare, and it shows uh, a map down below the uh, briefing section, and uh, some of the places are posted hostile, uh, permissive, uncertain, uh, leaning hostile, um, uncertain, leaning friendly, and I just wanted to know what you guys thought about it. Um, uh, so uh, this is a map of the United States. Some places are listed hostile. Yeah, it's uh, pretty graphic. It's basically saying that certain states are more hostile, but when well, you look specifically at the section that's Texas, uh, the whole state is listed hostile, and there's the most cities uh, specifically targeting that state. So it seems weird. Well, what if they? Um, I'm just guessing. Look, I'm just guessing here, but this is a uh, plan for some kind of uh, training exercise. They have to kind of work. They have to make, you know, since they're not actually in a war and this is training, they have to decide um, that, you know, imaginary things are occurring. Like, for instance, when I played Cops and Robbers with my friend back um, when we were 9 and 10, we would imagine that I was a robber and we would imagine that he was a cop. Maybe they're just imagining that Texas is um, hostile and they're imagining that New Mexico is brown. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and Colorado, that, Colorado looks friendly there. It's blue. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it, there's also a section for the exercise details. It's a, like basically just a briefing. Um, it includes uh, Arizona, Florida, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, New Mexico, and Utah. But uh, there's been news articles that are coming out about California, specifically on uh, Infowars.com. Uh, they posted a story saying uh, Barstow, California, uh, there were Green Berets who were hiding in hay trucks and uh, rental moving trucks uh, to travel through the city. And uh, it just it seems weird. You know, I've been hearing since I've been in the Liberty Movement, it's been 20 years now, I've been hearing about, oh, they're letting the Russians come do maneuvers in Ohio and a variety of things. I would suspect, Jimmy, that um, nothing's going to happen. And in six months, we'll all have forgotten about Jade Helm because that's what we forgot about all the other stuff. Do you have anything more? Uh, yeah, I just want hold to the, Hold the line, then. Hold the line. If worse comes to worst... Will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom-vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Thursday, gold continues to rise, up $10 to $1,147 per ounce. Silver has also gained $0.23 cents to $15.60 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $235 U.S. dollars. Robertson Roberts has been helping people to buy precious metals for nearly 40 years. If you would like more information, give us a call, 800-874-9760, or visit our website at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.49 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,142 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports fighters from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, attacked Turkish military forces Wednesday in a roadside bomb attack in the nation's southeast, killing eight soldiers. The attack came after a new round of Turkish airstrikes against Kurdish sites in the region along the Iraq border. Turkey launched its first attacks against PKK targets in Iraq late last month, ending two years of ceasefire and launching a new round of fighting, which has seen both sides escalating precipitously. The main fighting is in southeastern Turkey. Also on Wednesday, there was an attack on the palace in Istanbul, with the number of casualties there as yet uncertain, though no fatalities have yet been reported. Police reported they had detained a pair of people in that attack. So far, there was no claim of responsibility in Istanbul, but officials say the two they arrested had previously been affiliated with the Marxist-Leninist DHKPC, obviously meaning they are treated as the prime suspects. The PKK might have been behind it too, as they've recently launched some attacks in Istanbul. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a column by Human Rights Watch released Wednesday claims Egypt's new counterterrorism law threatens basic human rights. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi issued an anti-terrorism law on August 15th, which grants prosecutors greater power to arrest suspects and withhold them from due process, as well as the ability to execute deep and potentially indefinite surveillance of potential terrorists without needing a court order to do so. Nadim Huri, Deputy Middle East and North Africa Director for Human Rights Watch says that President al-Sisi's decree takes Egypt one step further towards a permanent state of emergency that could see basic civil disobedience punished by heavy sentences, including death. Among the acts that the new law criminalizes are the publication or promotion of terrorism-related news that contradicts the Defense Ministry's official statements and equalizes punishment for suspicion and execution of a terrorist crime. The law also erodes time limits for prosecuting terrorist acts, meaning there is no expiration date for suspected or committed crimes linked to terrorism to be tried in court. The organization claims the new definition far exceeds the definition adopted by the United Nations Security Council in 2004 adding also that the new law counters the basic idea of international human rights law that requires legislation to be precisely written so to avoid its arbitrary use in prosecuting a crime. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a former Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department captain charged in a probe of jail abuse pled guilty on Wednesday to lying on the witness stand. Under his plea agreement, William Thomas Carey must cooperate with U.S. prosecutors in the case against a retired second-in-command at the department. Carey entered his guilty plea in federal court in Los Angeles and faces up to five years in prison when he is sentenced on January 25th, according to Tom Morozak, a spokesman for the U.S. Attorney's Office. Carey had run a bureau that investigated cases of suspected abuse of inmates by deputies at the sheriff's department, which runs the nation's largest jail system. In May, a grand jury indicted Kerry and former undersheriff Paul Tanaka in a case stemming from a long-running federal investigation of corruption and suspected abuse of inmates at two downtown Los Angeles jails. As part of his agreement with the prosecutors, Kerry pled guilty to lying on the stand during the trial last year of a sheriff's deputy, later found guilty of trying to obstruct the investigation. The deputy was one of seven sheriff's officers convicted for their roles in blocking the probe. In exchange for his guilty plea and for his cooperation, prosecutors have dropped charges of conspiracy and obstruction of justice. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
The Japanese American internment facility was still in operation in the mountains of Northern California. The facility should have been closed in 1945 and its 6,000 residents released, but unfortunately the camp was overlooked until this week. I am happy to announce, however, that the remaining 118 de detainees have now been fully exonerated of suspicion of spying for General Tojo and they have been freed. Next item of business. The president will be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Yes, Denise? This is a huge oversight. How could this have happened? Well, Denise, it looks like the camps just somehow slipped through the cracks. The end of the Second World War was a hectic time in America, and it's only natural that we let a couple of things slip in our excitement over defeating the Nazis. Who is going to be held responsible for this? Congressional investigation? No, there won't. In fact, the War Relocation Authority was responsible for the decommissioning of the internment facilities, um, but that organization ceased to exist in 1946, so no. This is the Onion News Network. That's right, it is Free Talk Live, and you can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. It is Mark, Daryl, and Johnson. Every year, well, every year might be an exaggeration. Every few years at least, it seems like there's some new scare that surrounds a military exercise in the United States. Now, I, I can't say that I'm made comfortable by military exercises that are going on in the United States, but I do understand that if we're if they're if you're going to have a military, it's probably going to want to practice. And if it wants to practice, say, I don't know, urban warfare, it might want to practice that urban warfare in an urban environment. Um, and uh, we'll find oftentimes that uh, some people get upset about these uh, um, th these uh, exercises. And Jimmy's called in on it, and I just want to make sure that he gets an opportunity to uh, to, to to be completely heard out. So go ahead, Jimmy. Thought it was strange. I just wanted to get your guys' uh, you know, just intellectual ideas of what you thought. If you ever heard of anything like it before, that's all. Yeah, I've heard um, of. I remember back. Uh, this must have been 1994. Uh, there was, uh, you know, a claim that the Russian military was doing an exercise in Ohio and they're going to be taking over Ohio neighborhoods or something. And uh, you know, there was another joint exercise that was done with the Chinese at one point on U.S. soil. And uh, you know, I guess at this point. I'm so desensitized to these exercises that I just don't think anything's going to happen. So, Jimmy, I, I've got a question for you. Have you ever heard of Bold Alligator? Is that Operation Bold Alligator? Operation Bold Alligator. No, I haven't. It was a naval exercise in which thousands of Marines and sailors... Uh, it was actually launched last fall. They had amphibious landings, and the scenario was they were to prevent insurgent groups in the fictional country known as Garnett from launching an attack. That exercise took place in parts of Georgia and Florida. Then there was also Operation Robin Sage that took place in uh, the mountains of North Carolina, in the fictional country known as Pineland, and then there was something in South Carolina called Operation Derna Bridge that was very similar, uh, took place in Sumter National Forest. And these are just three of the other things that have taken place in recent times. And, like, nobody freaked out about those things. I think the only reason people are freaking out about Jade Helm is Alex Jones got some government documents and the Walmart closed. And apparently there were, like, underground tunnels connecting a bunch of Walmarts and something, something Barack Obama, something, something martial law, something, something dark side. Uh, yeah, I just the reason why it concerned me was because uh, instead of it being imaginary land, um, with the map of Texas specifically, the cities. Um, if you go to Wikipedia, any of the listeners, and just type in Jade Helm, you can see the uh, full description. Uh, it's 17 cities specifically in Texas. Uh, that's the largest uh, conglomerate, I guess you'd say, of a hostile force, from what Wikipedia is alleging. It was just—I'm not a conspiracy guy. It was just really weird to me. Yeah, I can tell you when I see that uh, those trucks full of military equipment rolling down the road one after another after another after another, it is does not make me feel comfortable. I don't like 
the feeling I have when I see that. Um, it, you know, it's, it, it doesn't make me feel like land of the free, you know, <laughs> but um, I suspect what we'll find out is, is that, you know, most of these guys in the military are going to be, you know, if something, if they were actually going to lock down um, the United States and, and call Texas hostile, there's going to be a lot of guys from Texas there and they're going to have to be ready to hold a gun on their, you know, neighbors, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the Texas governor, uh, Greg Abbott, uh, he ordered the state guard to monitor uh, the actions of Jade Helm. Yeah, uh, I heard that. Cruz, I mean, he contacted the Pentagon, so. It doesn't, doesn't surprise me in the least that a politician would uh, pander to uh, some people that have some concerns. I would Not at all. <laughs> yeah. You know. I, if I was I in that position, I, I would do exactly that. Look, um, yeah, we should. Uh, we need a blue ribbon panel for this. You know what? I'm going to get some of my friends together, and I'm going to pay them good, your good tax money to uh, to monitor this, to make sure that everybody's really comfortable with what's going on. Yeah, and uh, I also wanted to say, too, uh, I want to apologize to you guys for using your forum to uh, bash Dave from Poughkeepsie. And uh, I also want to apologize to Dave. Uh, I was a duller, Dave. I was a dunce. I shouldn't have done that to you. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, good. Now he's going to call. Thanks for the thanks for the call, Jimmy. <laughs> if you're going to say stuff about Dave, you should say it to his face. <laughs> hey, say it to my face. Yes. Well, and then repeat the same thing about 27 times in about a five-minute YouTube video. Yeah. So for those that don't know the uh, inside joke, Dave is uh, a frequent caller who, um, you know, repeats himself. A lot, Johnson. Um, we have I, we've we've addressed uh, immigration tonight. We've addressed uh, the United States dropping down to number twenty in freest countries sure. in the world. What uh, what do you got for us? Well, let's talk about international issues. I want to talk about uh, this right to be forgotten. Uh, since I brought it up a couple times over the past few weeks, as I've been on uh, Google being ordered to take down stories about people in the European Union, which may be coming to the United States. But essentially, the European Union has uh, enacted this right to be forgotten law on Google, and it's ridiculous. Essentially, any politician or any uh, celebrity or any just um, Joe Schmo can request to have their information or articles uh, about them removed from Google searches. I, I just, thought there were exemptions for public figures. Nope. No. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, inevitably, this is ridiculous. Is you know, and it's going to get more and more ridiculous until eventually the European Union is we're going to probably have to retract this law because it's really stupid. Yes. But so this is the extent of to which it's getting uh, ridiculous. Google has been ordered to remove links to news articles reporting on the company's earlier removal of links in response to a right, right to be forgotten request in Europe. So let me repeat that sentence. Google has been ordered to remove links to news articles reporting on the company's earlier removal of links in response to a right to be forgotten request in Europe. So now they have to remove the links talking about how they had to they, they have to remove links if yes. they somebody gets you know yeah. doesn't want to, their name on the internet for some reason right yep. so the uk's information commissioner office issued the order this week giving google 35 days to remove the links google has the right to appeal the order to the general regulatory chamber the order puts a meta spin on the controversial right to be forgotten ruling which lets people request that google remove links to information about them from its search results on its european sites the ruling issued last year established a mechanism for people to ask search engines to remove links to information that they consider to be Ill irrelevant or not in the public interest Though, without removing the actual content from the web, Google's response to this week's order could show how wide a net the requests might be allowed to encompass. The order was issued in response to a complaint from someone who had already had links removed around a conviction for a relatively minor offense from nearly a decade ago, the order said. Google removed... Wish I could remove... Uh, yeah. Have, have uh, <laughs> mentions of a conviction removed from the internet. That'd keep people busy. Well, Google removed the links to sites containing content related to the offense, but when links to news articles about the removal started to appear after a search for the person's name, the person asked Google to remove those links as well. <laughs> Google refused, the order said, on the grounds that the new links were relevant and in the public interest. 
Google took into account the media's journalistic judgment in determining whether the information about the removals was relevant and in the public interest, the order said. On Thursday, a Google spokeswoman said that the company had received the order and was reviewing it, but declined to comment further. In the UK's order, Deputy Information Commission David Smith acknowledged that the new links related to journalistic content. The commission does not dispute the journalistic content relating to the decisions to delist search results may be newsworthy and in the public interest, he wrote. However, that interest can be adequately and properly met without a search made on the basis of the complainant's name providing links to articles which reveal information about the complainant's spent conviction, he wrote. You know, um, it's interesting. I mean, you're talking about people's right to not be seen on the Internet. Well, what about the uh, journalist's right to have the story that they wrote be seen by people? Sure. You pull it out, and then nobody can see it. What do you think? 855-450-3733. Do you have a right not to have your name on the Internet? 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1 800 939 8536. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extendivite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extendivite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822, or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallo Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. 
The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org where you can contribute via various methods including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 8.55 for 50 free. Google is getting flooded with requests to have things, uh, information about uh, people removed. And yeah. we're going to talk about that here in just one second. But I want to tell you about Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is, for our family, my, my family, it has been the solution to Obamacare. Obamacare put um, pressure on us that, you know, we hadn't had previously. And... We have to had to have a solution. Um, so what Liberty Health Share is is, uh, you know, health shares are completely legal, all within the uh, the American uh, what is it? I don't know. Whatever Obamacare is called, um, Patient it, Protection Affordable Care Act. Yeah, Affordable Care Act. That's what I was thinking of. ACA. So it counts as health insurance. It yeah. I mean, it isn't health insurance. It counts in lieu of health insurance. Okay. I guess um, what it is is it's a sharing organization, which is essentially what health insurance is. It takes everybody's premium and then pays off to mm -hmm. um, things that uh, you know, people need to get paid for. But in this case, there's not the all the big buildings and all the overhead and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it it's for us, it's like half price. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. If you have to pay for your own insurance, please take a look um, at libertyhealthshare.org. I think you're going to find that it might be useful for you too. LibertyHealthShare.org, and the number is 855-58-LIBERTY. 855-58-LIBERTY, LibertyHealthShare.org. And, um, yeah, I've got to say it uh, looks it looks pretty good for us. So, Johnson, um, there's a little bit more to this article? Yeah, but just a little bit. Uh, so, you know, like this guy had said uh there is he's was talking about how these uh the interest the public interest can be supposedly uh, adequately and properly met without a search made on the basis of the complainant's name providing links to articles which reveal information about the complainant's spent conviction um, in other what words, does any of that mean none of that means so, anything yeah, in other you. words uh he do, basically uh the order that this the government order that has been issued uh, doesn't want all the new links removed, but only the links that appear after searches for a person's name. That's their sort of excuse. It's like, well, we're not trying to have you remove all the links. We just, if it comes up, if somebody searches based on a person's name, then don't display the links. God, the what is this? Is the stupidest ruling? It's ridiculous. So that what ridiculous. happened was in Europe, um, you know, you got to be Europe, um, and they some court decided that um, some higher court decided that. You have a right to privacy, which is great. You do. It's just the latest in a slew of government just dummies uh, holding websites responsible for the content of users, right? A and the internet and a search engine. They're telling Google a search engine that they can't display certain results, as though right. they've got somebody out there, you know, some paid functionary out there giving you search results. This is a computer program. Right. If you've done something dumb and there's an article out there on the internet about it. Then tough. And this is coming from the mouth of a person who went to prison for eight and a half years for second degree murder. Too bad. Right. If something comes up when you don't like it, too bad. And that's that. And and on top of that, on top of this ridiculousness, so data was leaked earlier this year by The Guardian, the newspaper, the UK newspaper, that showed that many of the removal requests submitted to Google so far have come from everyday people requesting the removal of links related to private or personal information. So Google's just getting this deluge of just nonsense requests, just stupid, stupid waste of time. They shouldn't have to deal with this. And this is exactly the result that was expected from this dumb, dumb ruling. And well, if you live in Europe, find out any of these morons who voted for this and change it. You know, and if you're in Germany, well, 
forget it. I can't help you because well, Germany is just ridiculous on this stuff. Even if even if they said you, if you want stuff removed from the internet, you have to pay them ten dollars an hour for the people that have to remove stuff. It, it there was some kind of uh, you know barrier that people had to go over. There would be. Far fewer um, requests for this stuff. This is just people that are allowed to put requests in. Oh, I'll request this and I'll request that, and yeah, that'll be great. So there you go. Anyway, um, let's go to the phones. We got Jim calling in from Georgia. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Jim. I'm calling from Georgia, and I'm one of the many patriots that have been out at our recruiting centers, you know, until they our government arms them. Uh, okay, um, so you've been, uh, you're one of these guys standing out there with the guns out in front of the recruitment centers, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, mine's been on the Wally Shaw, it's been on um, Right Wing News, Politistic, it's all over. Uh, because the local email reported me to the FBI because my signs offend them. And. Uh, What'd your signs say? Support and defend our troops from Islamic savages. Okay. Um, and, so when you say that, are you saying that people that believe in Islam are savages? Well, the the founder was a false prophet and a and a kitty rapist, uh, and to actually participate in the personal beheading of hundreds of people. Medina, just one example. Okay, um, and so, yeah, I'm saying Islam is a Islam is a mental disorder based on a false prophet who was a savage. Yes. All right. So and and here's the thing: the, the Islamic organizations, every single one of them, are working against our First Amendment rights. As well, okay. That's not a that's not a um, a theory. It's not an allegation. Uh, the Islamic Society of North America is um, uh, working with the Brady campaign against our Second Amendment. Care is trying is already trying to curb free speech with the Justice Department. And yeah, they're trying to um, eventually criminalize critique of Islam. And and I, look. I'm not doing that with other people that uh, disagree with me trying to curb their rights. So why are they trying to curb our right of free speech? Well, I don't know who they are. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, there's organizations out there that want to curb people's rights. Um, yeah. Hold on, Jim. Hold on, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hold on. Um, I do. I am familiar with the organization called Muslims for Liberty, and I'm certain that they would uh, try very hard to defend your right to uh, free speech. Actually, actually, Muslims for Liberty. On their Facebook page, I know you're talking about M4L, has actually is on record from trying to promote liberty from an Islamic perspective. Yeah. Okay. Liberty is an Islamic perspective of liberty. One needs to only look at the countries that are dominated by the Islamic ideology. It is completely contrary to the Constitution. What is contrary? Hold on. Um, it's uh, you, you, for us having the ability to have free speech, and it, it, it does not allow you to critique or even draw a picture of the prophet. Not my theory. It's in their own. It's in their own teaching. Okay? Yeah, so you do realize that there's a sculpture of the prophet Muhammad carved into the U.S. Supreme Court building. Yeah, and and, and that's and that's really. And that's ridiculous because it, 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 Islam it, it seeks domination through a caliphate. It does not listen. Every Islamic, everywhere where Islam has control, okay, it, it creates slavery and subjugation. Okay, but Our everywhere history, the government yeah. has control, it creates slavery and subjugation. I mean, you're you're just talking about a you know a, a, a larger really, section of the state. Okay, you know, you know, I've had enough. You're, okay, I, I got you guys. You guys appear to be Islamic apologists. Okay, I'm an Islamic apologist. That's fine. Thanks. Appreciate the call. 855 450 free. Just recently, we've witnessed some of the most catastrophic disasters in history. Be sure to prepare yourself with great tasting, high quality, GMO free food that has a 25 year shelf life. Of course, we're talking about the foods from survivalfoodalliance.com. And don't forget, the human body needs up to three quarts of water every day to remain healthy and hydrated. So check out our water bricks at survivalfoodalliance.com. Go to survivalfoodalliance.com or call 877-223-1776. 
Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. There's only one place you could have sex without everybody else knowing about it. <laughs> That's in the bathroom. It Unless was... you want to go back into the crew quarters, which might give you bonus points. The Mile High Club awards you, I suppose, based on the amount of times that you've entered into the club. Not only do you want to be in the club, you want to be the top dog. Yeah, right? you, you got to be a sure. premier yeah. member. So I would think there'd have to be points for location on the plane who you encountered with. Were sure. you there with your girlfriend? Did you take her into the bathroom? Oh. Did you manage to get a stewardess into the bathroom with you? Did you manage trick. to yeah. get uh, the girl that you just happened to be sitting next to on the plane? I mean, so all of these things could Yeesh. be worth... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> to be a part of the Mile High Club, what's the criteria? You have to... Copulate in the air. Yeah. What defines copulation? Who has to have an orgasm? Does there have to be an orgasm? Or do you or... just have to stick it in and pull it out? Is it just right. penetration? Bam, bam. We're yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mile High Club, get We're my in. card. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the lrn.fm Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Live, 855-450-3733. Just had a gentleman call in talking about, well, how uh, Muslims are savages. And look, um, I I think it's terrible what uh, you know people getting shot up at the, you know, these recruitment officers getting shot up or whatever. And it seems really silly to me that the, uh, the federal government won't let people in the military carry a gun to protect themselves. And so, therefore, I support Americans' right to stand out in front of recruitment centers with guns if that's what they want to do. I, rec- I support their right to stand out there with a sign that says, Muslims are savages. Just don't expect me to agree with that crap. Um, I, generally, when somebody says that, my experience is they have, a, they have skin in the game. They're usually a big supporter of their religion. Usually that religion is Christianity. Right. See, for me, I don't have a big st- – I don't care what your religion is. If it's – if it's Islam, if it's Christianity, if it's Judaism, listen, I don't care. 
I really don't care. It just doesn't matter to me. But if you folks can't get along, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to separate you. You're going to have to go to your corner. Right. And I, I, you know, we we all three just got called Islamic apologists because we don't want to kill the Muslims. I didn't hang up on him, by the way. He I, I didn't say you did, but he did call us Islamic apologists because we don't want to kill the Muslims. Well, he's trying to claim that, well, people that are Muslim do horrible things, so therefore all Muslims are savages. Let's look at it from the point of view of somebody that lives in the Middle East whose family just got killed by a remote control airplane dropping a bomb at a wedding. They're thinking, wait a second, that came from the United States. Those people are Christians, so therefore Christians must all be horrible. And he would probably try to say how wrong they are. Well, you shouldn't collectivize. But yet that's exactly what he's doing. And just to, you know, for sort of point of reference, it was the Christian church that was slaughtering hundreds of thousands of people during the Crusades in the name of Jesus. Because apparently Jesus wanted the Pope to kill people for Jerusalem or something. I kind of think that you got to let something go that's 50 years old. Like, you know, if you're holding on to this group of people did something 50-something years ago— or more in this case a thousand years ago i don't again i don't care like people change in that amount of time so i don't care about the crusades i, I don't care about a lot of this stuff i think a lot of folks um in the middle east they, they, the middle east they've never really had a chance to govern themselves right. they went from the ottoman empire into british control they were you know you got you got brits in there drinking drinking port and drawing lines on maps deciding you know which section is going to be given to whom and all that stuff and then they've never had a chance to sort of rule themselves and i think that's a real problem let's go to eric calling in from columbus ohio eric you're on free talk live what's on your mind Hey, yeah, uh, just actually, you hit a lot of the heads, uh, a lot of the points I want to make right now. No, I love to take people's steam. Regards. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, in regards to that last caller, um, I'm a, I was raised Christian, um, became an atheist. Um, I've studied Islam. Uh, I was not unlike that guy about a year ago. I was very vitriolic, I was very hateful, um, based, you know, purely against Islam. And then I, instead of letting that develop into, you know, vitriolic hate, um, I decided, hey, I don't know much about this. I'm going to study it. And so for the past year, I've been studying Islam. And one of the central tenets to Islam is, and it's, I can't quote the passage you know, verbatim, but it is, in a, except in response to murder, to take the life of another human is to take the life of all of humanity. So, you know, basically, don't don't kill people. Yeah, the, it, um, it says that, but I know that uh, there was some kind of situation where Muhammad was having to deal with basically pilgrims being killed or something, so um, he had to re respond in that. He responded with force, isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. Back in, uh, another thing that helps understand, you know, when you read people, sometimes people will read the Quran or read passages from the Quran. Um, and what I, what I found helped with that is I actually bought, I purchased a biography of the Prophet Muhammad, and it puts a lot of that stuff into into perspective you know? uh, I find I feel like a lot of people don't want a, a uh, you know uh, an unbiased opinion of Muhammad they want a very biased opinion and that's what I feel like I was getting from that last caller yeah he he I could tell you when he called in you know he had his mind made up I think his idea that he has of Islam has been fed to him from you know Fox News and various other you know far right far right outlets and I just kind of want to address a few things that he made. Uh, most 90% of what he said is untrue. Um, yeah, I do appreciate I, the call. I, I'm friends with... What? Oh, okay. You, you, okay, thanks so much. 855-450 free. Let's go to Greg calling in from New York. Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how are you? Um, I was going to call in and talk about um, the human population and population growth, but I just wanted to respond to the previous... Uh, two callers about Islam, I guess, okay. kind of weigh in. Yeah, uh, please do. So, yeah, I think uh, look, it's probably, you know, been well known now that uh, these new atheists are criticizing Islam, you know, like Bill Maher, for example, and Sam Harris on the one hand. And then you have liberals, uh, on the other hand, uh, defending, um, you know, defending Islam uh, and just saying that you can find uh, bad people everywhere. And I think that uh, you can sort of resolve this by saying that there's a difference between Islam and Islamism. A uh, you know, if 
political ideas that you um, would say that this is how we're supposed to run a society. And I think Islamism, much like communism, can be seen a little bit like a mind virus. Like, I think you can identify with this, as, you know, as a libertarian, you would say, listen, people just have in their mind, this is how you're supposed to run society, and it's the only way to run it. And we have to conquer other people and force them to, do, uh, to run it like this. So if you look around the world, you see what are most states today with an official uh, religion, they're Islamic states. Unless you count atheism, in which case China and and USSR were also huge offenders, uh, suppressing religious freedoms and other things. So, yeah, I think Islam, in its political sense, um, is, is in fact uh, kind of oppressive uh, to people who may be, you know, homosexual or they may be uh, just of a different religion. And I think that is a problem. Um, and it could animate people to do uh, terrorist acts, but so can other ideologies. Uh, you know, I, I hear this about a lot of things. First of all, uh, you know, Sam Harris, I agree with Sam Harris on a lot of things, but um, Sam Harris is basically a psychopath when it comes to his, uh, you know, his relationship with uh, Islam. I mean, he's he's essentially, I mean, he, I mean, he talks about violence, you know, and it's just, it's crazy. And then when you would say that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know about Russia, but I do know about uh, China. And that, you know, you talk about Mao and you talk about uh, some of these leaders and they say, oh, well, it, you know, it's atheism. Well, you know, you talk about Mao. He was raised under these like staunchly uh, Taoist parents and believed in Taoism for like most of his life. And then basically just stopped talking about Taoism, but didn't specifically ever say like, I'm an atheist. So it wasn't like the religion of those governments was, was oh, we're going to be strictly an atheist uh, religion or, or we're strictly uh, everything's going to be based on atheism. That's not what happened. So it's really kind of like that's sort of a false, you know, it's like Hobson's choice. It's like, no, that's not really what, what actually happened. It's not like these governments were actively well, promoting atheism. Hmm? About the USSR, I mean, Stalin, yeah, he went to a seminary school and he studied to be a Christian, but I think the USSR was quite heavily promoting atheism. They were, um, you know, they they literally um, punished people for practicing their religion too much. I mean, that yep. happened. They the drove USSR. the old religion, um, they drove the old religion folks out, um, the old believers, old religion, something like that. I can't remember what the term is exactly. I know. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, you know, those those folks, uh, they had to go into hiding. Um, there was I read some book about some of them that ran off into the t- uh, taiga. And, but promoting uh, statism is not promoting rationality and reason, which is what atheism is like really kind of about. No, oh, the atheism is my kind of atheism, not everybody else's kind of atheism. <laughs> I'm sorry, but skepticism, that's what skepticism really is. They're not claiming it's to be not, skeptics. It's not, you know, it's not statism. It's not worship the government right. as though it's God. Guys, right, so I think anytime, anytime you have an ideology and it goes into power, I think that thing. Thank you, Greg. Put Appreciate ideology it. Ideology ahead of people. Thank you. 855 450 free, free talk live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. 
Okay, open your mouth and say, ah. Getting a good view of a sore throat can be difficult, but the new doctor-recommended sore throat exam kit from SayAhNow.com makes it easy. A first-of-its-kind scientifically designed oral retractor to relax the tongue, minimize gag reflex, and increase visibility. Our Made in the USA kit also includes a medical-grade reference chart, easy-to-use website and apps so that you're one click away from unparalleled sore throat information. Click SayAhNow.com. SayAhNow.com, a must-have for your family's medical preparedness. By now, you know the smart way to buy emergency food storage is calories per dollar. Ready Supply Foods sells you 50% more food for your money. GMO-free, 25-year shelf life, great tasting, and free shipping. You need 2,000 calories per day under ideal conditions. Most 30-day kits don't have enough calories to sustain you for more than a week. They just don't have enough nutrition to do the job. See the comparisons for yourself at ReadySupplyFoods.com. We are the new leader in value and quality. Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com today. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no. now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. We've been talking about Islam here. And um, I guess there was a fellow who called, there was a guy who called in, said uh, he was... Uh, standing out in front of uh, these recruitment centers and he had a you know sign that said you know I don't know save America from from Muslim savages or something to that effect and I, it kind of got us going he called us to Muslim apologists and I don't know exactly what that means but I did tell you earlier that I was going to tell you how to get Bitcoin and I'm going to do that now so expresscoin.com is the best way for you to get your cryptocurrencies be they Bitcoin Litecoin Dogecoin they're fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, you can get cryptocurrencies with a money order or a check. And this is the lowest cost in getting Bitcoin from what I've been able to find anywhere is ExpressCoin.com. So they've got an app for your phone if you want to get that over at ExpressCoin.com, too. You use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of whatever cryptocurrency you want to get at no fee at all. There's no fee if you get up to $40 worth. Um, anything under $40, expresscoin.com, and that coupon code, again, is FTL, as in Free Talk Live. Let's go to Tom calling in from Maryland. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, good evening, you heathen uh, Muslim haters. Yep, that's right. Or, or do you like them? Uh, I, I do have a comment on that, but first, I, I have many rebuttals. I wanted to wrap up something I was talking about last night, and there were people rebuttaling me. 
uh, it seemed like every hour. Is it the guy's name Ian? You're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to it bring just, everybody up to date. So it was just it was about the permission or apology, and there was just so many rebuttals, and it was just making me very mad. Permission or know. apology? You're gonna need to make it specific because there's people listening now that weren't listening last night. So start yeah, us from the relative, beginning. Relative to uh, Kenny F. Flyers, the two guys got arrested in Colorado. Yes, two people got arrested in Colorado for handing out jury nullification flyers. Right. You disagree with me about the permission or apology. And, uh, and by the way, you try to clue in a lot. I don't want to say the guy's name. Uh, I was trying to get you to clue in on exactly what I was talking about. By the way, don't ever get rid of him. Um, he, he really makes a show. He, he doesn't come on that often, at least not when I'm listening. And it's hysterical. Um, I, I especially miss the, the Army guy. I haven't heard him in a while. Um, Who are we talking about? Conan was in the Army. Who? There was a guy from Texas that used to really get into it with one of you. He wanted to – he hated China. He he wanted to go get them. Uh, very neocon type attitude and uh, would always um, get into these long debates. Uh, he was funny, but I haven't heard him in a while. But the other one – and again, I don't want to say his name, but uh, he, he's funny as hell. The one that calls in from New York? Yeah, I, I find him amusing too. It's okay if you say his name now because uh, it's the final segment. <laughs> Uh, not not me. But listen, uh, getting to my point, um, I, I did want to clarify that. Uh, the permission of apology thing, in personal relationships, uh, normally it's taken literally. Um, it, you'll have those who will ask permission to do something or those who just do and then apologize if it turns out that they're wrong. The only thing that I meant, I didn't really mean literally to ask the court permission. Uh, I think we need to do what liberty and freedom calls for. Uh, regardless of what extent we have to go to, uh, as long as it's not ridiculously radical. Uh, although sometimes that, that is necessary. What I meant was simply it's best when you're dealing with these clowns, and, and they don't play by the rules. I was just trying to let people know it's always a good idea to cover yourself, even if you put an ad in a newspaper, something so that if you get arrested like these guys in Colorado, you can say, look, uh, we put up a public posting. And nobody responded to it. In, in contract law, you know, if you don't respond, that can be considered acquiescence. It can also be considered fraud. And if you send a letter to their uh, confused courthouse, it probably would never make it to anybody who would respond in a proper amount of time. And if you posted an ad in a local paper, you would have that to back yourself up in case they went ahead and put the cuffs on you just to exert their authority. Just like if you had somebody who was stalking you and you asked me, well, what do you think I should do? I would say, you know what? Keep good records, make police reports from time to time, because if the guy actually turns violent or a girl or whoever it is that's stalking you, then you have a, a, a paper trail to say, look, yeah, here's why I did it. And, and this is what led up to it. Instead of just having a he said, she said type situation. And of course, when you're dealing with people in government, it's never he said, she said, it's the government says, and you're wrong. And that's all I was saying was you know, just be smart because, uh, you know, I agree with a lot of the things that you guys are doing. And I hate to hear about folks like the two in Colorado getting jammed up. I mean, these are serious situations, especially for older people. You know, jail can kill you, let's face it. And Tom, even the threats. I tend to, um, you know, like I, 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 especially when you're talking about keeping a paper trail, I think that's a great idea. I do think there's dangers in uh, letting the government know what you're going to do as far as a protest goes. But, you know, I'm willing to uh, concede that, uh, it, you know, there's a there are other ways to do things besides uh, the way that I think um, is, is a good idea. But what I'd l most like to say is. Don't ever get emotional about what goes on in the air on Free Talk Live. It's mm -hmm. you're, you're part of the show when you call in, and, you know, I can't get emotional when I have to deal with Ian, so you can't either. No, no, no. I, I was trying to imitate that guy. I, I was trying to be funny. I wasn't emotional at all. Okay. I was oh, that's to, funny. I was, try, I was trying to do what he did so that you would think, yeah, I, I thought that I was a better actor than that. I thought that you were clueing right away. But, no, I just wanted to clear it up with you uh, so that, 
you and anybody that's listening would know it's a good idea to cover yourself because they will lie. Like I said, I, I was in the system and, and I saw just uh, atrocities take place that, that really disturbed me and, and still do to this day. But as far as getting upset, no, I'm too old and tired. <laughs> I appreciate the call, Tom. Thank you so much. All right. 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. So, Mark, I want to tell you about this. A, a homeowner in Missouri built a patio using military headstones. This was in the news today. Oh, my today. God. <laughs> oh, this my was, God. All this right. was in the news today. How did he obtain these headstones? Well, we'll get to that. A Navy veteran found out about it and posted pictures on social media, creating an outcry to get the stones removed. See, this is why Mark has to tell people not to get emotional about things that they uh, hear on Free Talk Live. Wow. The homeowner is now apologizing. I took advantage of something that I shouldn't have taken advantage of. Free scraps stolen to make a small patio out of. Okay. uh, Okay, it go. I don't know why this is a quote. Uh, I just used them. It's all I had. That's it, says the homeowner. The homeowner says nearly a decade ago he got the headstones from a now defunct monument company. He says that he used the headstones to make a patio for his mom who fell. I was just making something out of nothing. 90% of them are broken and they were never in a cemetery. They went from the monument to the landfill. They were mistakes. I didn't know. Okay, uh, this is making this is an entirely different thing than the than the, uh, the head, headline headline now. But uh, all however, right. it doesn't seem to matter. The graves doesn't matter, right? Like the, the gravestones. You, yeah, they you desecrated the church of the it state. It don't matter because yeah. yeah. Merca and I can yeah. Merca more than you can yeah. Merca because Merca can Merca. It's a lot like yeah. that. All over Merca. The gravestones caught the eye of a realtor who told Navy veteran Ed Hark Reader. He, along with the Ozarks County deputy, took a news crew down to the property. These represent a soldier, a sailor, an airman, someone who Even served our country and died. Their name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone who served our country and died. They aren't here to take care of a situation we found out about, and it's up to somebody else to pick up the slack," said Hark Reader. No, those represent mistakes that were made at the Tombstone yeah, exactly. Company. Yeah. <laughs> the home artist says he didn't think he was doing what he was go- doing could be offensive to some. He first said the gravestones would be staying. I can't move them. Obviously, I can't move them. I'm sorry. And then if he needs help, we will be happy to get the Patriot Guard out here with a dump truck and we will load the stones and get them out of here. What are they going to build the guy a porch? Yeah, they're going to just steal his porch. From uh, let's him. destroy this man's porch. It's made from the blood of our fallen heroes. It's made from the blood of our fallen, broken tombstones. Oh, wait, it's not actually made from the blood of anything. <laughs> with the mistakes. Made, <laughs> like, uh, this is now it's gotten funny. OK, yeah. so like before it's like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is truly sacrilegious. Right. For and these people. Turns out to be ridiculous. Yes, that 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 is the definition of clickbait. And this poor homeowner, he's like, he did change his mind and he admits that he made a mistake now because he's just being berated by these statists. Yeah, he made I, a mistake by letting a <laughs> letting relator come onto his yeah. property, and she went and blabbed to some navy guy that was like, "There's some stuff in I don't murka cause yeah. murka murka." I ain't blaming, he says, I ain't blaming nobody for nothing but me. (laughs) I took them out of the landfill. There are close to 150 headstones on the patio. The business where the homeowner says the gravestones were originally from say that they were rejected by the government and discarded. I'm stunned by the story. You can't make use of (laughs) discrapped Merca calls Merca. Check us out in the meantime over at freetalklive.com. You can sign up for updates at uh, updates.freetalklive.com. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. 
Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, August 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.49 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,142 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $236. Antiwar.com reports fighters from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, attacked Turkish military forces Wednesday in a roadside bomb attack in the nation's southeast, killing eight soldiers. The attack came after a new round of Turkish airstrikes against Kurdish sites in the region along the Iraq border. Turkey launched its first attacks against PKK targets in Iraq late last month, ending two years of ceasefire and launching a new round of fighting, which has seen both sides escalating precipitously. The main fighting is in southeastern Turkey. Also on Wednesday, there was an attack on the palace in Istanbul, with the number of casualties there as yet uncertain, though no fatalities have yet been reported. Police reported they had detained a pair of people in that attack. So far, there was no claim of responsibility in Istanbul, but officials say the two they arrested had previously been affiliated with the Marxist-Leninist DHKPC, obviously meaning they are treated as the prime suspects. The PKK might have been behind it too, as they've recently launched some attacks in Istanbul. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a column by Human Rights Watch released Wednesday claims Egypt's new counterterrorism law threatens basic human rights. President Abdel Fattah LCC issued an anti-terrorism law on August 15th, which grants prosecutors greater power to arrest suspects and withhold them from due process, as well as the ability to execute deep and potentially indefinite surveillance of potential terrorists without needing a court order to do so. Nadim Hari, Deputy Middle East and North Africa Director for Human Rights Watch says that President LCC's decree takes Egypt one step further towards a permanent state of emergency that could see basic civil